What's up, folks? How we doing? Welcome to Basics with Babish Live. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the stream over here so I can see what y'all are saying. Mute my computer so we don't hear it twice. What's up, folks? Oh, we got. Are we already have some super chats? How you doing? Uh, uh, Jortendo gave five dollars and said, "Personally, I like my general says swimming in sauce." I agree. That's why I didn't, I didn't make enough sauce last time in the live stream. For those of you who are just joining us or have never been here before for a live stream, this is Basics with Babish Live, where I'm going to cook last week's, or in this case, two weeks ago's episode of Basics Live. Uh, and you guys can cook along, we can talk food, or you know, we can uh, talk about a whole bunch of memes I've never heard of, because that's all I'm seeing in the chat. <laughs> Uh, as always, in the other room, I've got my boys holding me down. I've got Sawyer Jacobs and Vincent Cross. Sawyer has the one, is the one with the mic right now. So, Sawyer, why don't you say hi to the nice people at home? Hello, hello. Vinny and I are back here checking levels, reading all the memes, trying to get rid of all the spam, trying to get all the best questions. Hit us up. Let us know. We'll be here. That's right. You guys have questions. We have answers. That sounds like a great catchphrase. We should, we should trademark that. You've got questions, we've got answers. That's in incredible that I just invented that. Um, I, I'm just fucking around. Uh, the, 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 you guys might wonder why there's a Southern Grist tasting snifter in front of me, and that's because I'm gonna be drinking some of my beer that I worked on with them. I, I feel uh, uh, greedy saying my beer because I, did, I didn't make it. Really, they made it, but they made it with Cherry's Jubilee that I flamed myself. This is it, it's called Moon Crane. It's available at fine Southern Grist, uh, Southern Grist locations, I don't know, everywhere. Um, and it is, a, as you can see here, let me, uh, this isn't a sponsorship or anything, I just helped uh, make this beer with them and it's really cool. Uh, uh, it's, it's a Fraser themed beer for anybody who's picking up on the, the, uh, the, the Moon, Daphne Moon and Niles Crane last name reference and the, uh, that's the, the skyline of Nashville instead of, um, instead of Seattle. And you'll notice on the back there's a little BWB action there. And we worked together to make this. It's a Cherry's Jubilee Sour uh, with, brewed with vanilla and marshmallows. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but it rocks. And I'm about to have some. OK. What's going on with you guys? Before I dig into this, let's look at a couple. Ooh, we have a lot of super chats. Oh my goodness. All right, let's look at a few super chats here. Oh my god, I need to catch up here. Uh, Chris Dabmaster <laughs> said, uh, have you ever considered working with the McEl McElroy brothers, my brother, my brother, and me, and doing a Munch Squad episode? I have not, but I will reach out to them. That's a good idea. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. George Elson gave five pounds and said, you've inspired me to cook. I love you, Banish. And <laughs> I really appreciate that, man. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that I inspired you to cook. And uh, thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, just cooked with Dustin, said, please try my kimchi recipe. I will. I'm working on a kimchi basics episode right now, so I'll check that out. Uh, just cooked with Dustin, thank you for the super chat. Juan, Juan, Juan Aurelis Garcia, that's a cool first name, uh, gave $4.99, no question, but thank you very much for the super chat. <clears throat> Alana Sh uh, Schaefer, Alana Schaefer gave $5 and said, I'm working on a str cooking stream of my own called Pole Chef, and you are a huge inspiration. We'd love to do a collab one someday. That sounds fun, and I will check that out. Thank you. Luke Deary gave 20 British pounds sterling and said, hey, Babish, enjoy your show. Enjoy the stuff you cook. Glad to be around for this long. Say, since you're putting KFC out of business, would you mind doing the spicy tender roast Monterey from the 90s KFC commercials? I, I don't remember that at all. I'm a 90s kid, and I don't remember that one bit. Um, yeah, it's spicy tender roast? That sounds Toss delicious. that in the links for us. Yeah, somebody yeah. Uh, toss Link it in the Link that in the comments. Please. Yeah, thank you. Alan Hooker gave $10 and said, hey, big fan, love your videos. You got me into cooking. That's lovely to hear. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. How about we crack one of these open, guys? And uh, I'm going to invite the boys to come in here and have a sip with me before we get started. So, gentlemen, uh, whenever you're ready, come on in. And I'm out of, like, nice glass. I'm out of, like, nice glasses, so all I have are martini glasses for the fellas. So that's going to be funny. And as you'll see, this pours a lovely crimson with a pretty mild foamy head because it's not super carbonated. It is obviously, I'm just gonna get it so Southern Crest is covered up. There we go. <coughs> There's some cool guys out in Nashville. I wish their beer was more widely available, but uh, maybe we can do something about that in the near future. 
I'm going to pour some out for the fellas here. They're coming on in to do a, a pre-General So's toast as we, as is tradition. There's Sawyer. There's Vincent. I can hear myself and it's weird. Thank you. Give me, give me this, <laughs> you, you crazy man. Cheers. Cheers to you guys. Cheers to you. <laughs> oh, what a goofball. What a goofball that Vinny is. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, how's the audio, guys? Let me know if the uh, audio is peaking at all. We can't hear it. We can't preview it right now. So if my mic is peaking, if it sounds like it's, you know, um, uh, distorted when I speak loudly, God, that's good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this over here because it's such a cool can. I love this can. I swear, this is not like a sponsored episode or an advertisement. I just, I'm very proud of this beer that we made together and, uh, and it's really tasty. I'm gonna get back over the super chats here, um, but let us know about the audio. Vinny's got his eye on the comments and uh, let us know if it sounds good. Let's see, we got $10 from Lance Howard who said, hi, any tips about kitchen chaos? No, I am the least organized dude in the world um, and my kitchen is in constant chaos outside of the small degree of it that you can see. Everywhere else, I mean, I should turn the camera honestly and show you just like the, the chaos uh, of this kitchen. Nah, I'm not gonna do that, but it's, uh, any tips, uh, I guess, would be to just stay on top of it. Like when you're cooking, try to actively do dishes, try to actively fill the dishwasher if you've got one uh, so, so, you, so things don't get out of hand too early. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for your super chat. We got new members. We got new members like Keith Robinson. Thank you, Keith. Oh, Keith, C oh my God, there's so many super chats. Uh, Matthew Lauren gave $20 and said, Babish, my guy, I love your videos. I worked at Chipotle and I pretend to cook like you. Cool, man. I love Chipotle except for their cilantro rice, as you might be able to imagine. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, Silly OZ gave $5 and said, how long did videos take to film? That really depends. Generally about, I can shoot them within a day and then it takes another day to edit and then um, two to three days generally. Uh, I, I, I have a pretty efficient system worked out here where I, where I can just shoot and go in the other room, edit, crank it out. There's been some cases where I've shot things the day before it's come out and have uh, edited and, uh, and gotten it out there. Um, thank you very much for the super chat. Crit, I can't, I can't pronounce your last name, I'm sorry. Crit gave 10 uh, British pounds sterling and watching from the UK, Crit and Cecilia. Thank you, Crit and Cecilia. Thank you so much for the super chat. Leek Russell gave $5 and said, I love the channel you help replenish my creativity while cooking. That's a lovely thing to say. I'm really happy to hear that. Thank you so much for the super chat. Gosker gave five euros and said, shout out to nice guys, yeah. Oh, nice guys, yeah, in Dublin, Ireland who love your channel. Shout out to nice guys, yeah. I've not heard of that channel, but I'm gonna go check it out. Thank you very much for the super chat. The gaming giant gave $5 and said, drink on the job, you're fired. Well. Yeah, no, I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess I have to fire myself because I'm, I work for myself, uh, which is an, a really nice thing to be able to do. And it's all thanks to you guys and thanks to Super Chats like this. Ian Coating uh, gave $5 and said, first li time live stream viewer, huge fan of the show. I'd love to see a tempura batter for the chicken. Definitely my favorite way to eat it. I agree. Uh, I would, I, my, that's what I thought it was, that's what I thought you were supposed to do with uh, General Tso's was make a tempura batter, but it's, it's, it's chunky, it's craggled, it's not smooth like tempura batter, uh, so that's why it necessitates this kind of like slightly different uh, dry breading, but um, I do love tempura and I'm sure we're going to cover it on a future episode soon. Jake Mastera gave $5 and said, what watch are you wearing? What's your favorite watch you own? Uh, we got a new watch alert here, folks. I just picked this guy up. This is a this is a Rolex um, Sea Dweller, and I just got it last week, uh, and it's my it's my new favorite. I love my Daytona to death, but um, it's uh, you know the 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 youngest is always the favorite, right? Is that the rule when you have a family? And my watches are are my family, so that that's how that works. Uh, yeah, um, very excited about that. Thank you for the super chat, and thank you for noticing. Um, Juan Arellis Garcia is back with a question this time. $10 super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, love your videos. Been binging them for days so far. Love a bunch of your videos. Heart. That's not a question, but thank you so much for your, for your generosity and just, and just uh, spending money to say nice things. That's really, really kind of you. Kyle Morsel gave, that's a fun name. Kyle Morsel gave $20 and said, you've inspired my son and I to cook together. 
He loves your mushroom soup and he's picky. I entered the car panini contest and I made it into the review video. I considered that a win. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. That's awesome. I don't, I, I can't remember which one yours was, but um, I'm very happy to hear that you gave it a shot and tried to make something good out of something so terrible. And I keep cooking with your son. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Cooking with CJ gave $25. Hey brother, you're an inspiration. All of us cooking YouTubers out there. Thanks for all you do, CJ. Thank you, Cooking with CJ. I think I remember you from past Super Chats. So thank you for your, your continued support. That's really nice. And everybody go check out Cooking with CJ. I'll check it out as well. Um, Unspoken Babbler gave $14.99, said, love your work. Being an Indian myself, I love those dishes but would like more, but I'm being selfish, peace and love. That's not selfish at all. Indian cooking is wonderful and you can expect some new Indian, I'm gonna get down here and just talk with you guys like we're human beings. Um, you can expect more Indian basics videos because I did a collaboration with uh, Floyd Cardoz of the Bombay Bread Bar um, here in New York City and he came over and showed us how to make some roti, some Partha, I can't remember the names of these breads. Three different kinds of bread, naan, of course. Uh, three different kinds of Indian bread and, um, and uh, three different kinds of sauces just, uh, or, or curries, uh, basic Indian sauces. So you can expect those videos coming in the next few months. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Aaron Malfi, for uh, the $20 <laughs> for the $20 super chat and he said, I want to see the kitchen clutter. All right, you know what, for 20 bucks, I'll show you the kitchen clutter. Sorry for walking off screen for a second here, folks. Which one of you guys spilled your beer all over the place? Jeez, who am I working with here? All right, so I'm gonna pan the camera over this way and you're gonna see some clutter, here we go. So there's camera two and there's the clutter. <laughs> That's the side of the kitchen that you don't see because it's covered in whole bunch of nonsense. That's where I keep all the, uh, all the spices and everything that I'm going to need and the various ingredients for upcoming episodes. And there's the stove cam over there. And we're back to center. Let me center that up nice and good. Uh, it looks a little crooked, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. Not while you guys are here live. Oh, I love being behind the camera. That's fun. Okay. Let me clean up this spilled beer all over the damn floor. Goodness gracious. We only have four of these left, guys. I'm just kidding. I, uh, it's a martini glass. It's hard to drink beer. I, I walk with a beer and a martini glass. All right, Aaron, thank you very much for the $20 super chat. I hope you enjoyed seeing the clutter. There you go. Um, then we've got Damien Bogle gave 20, I'm not entirely sure what that currency is, but I got 20 of them, thank you. Hey man, happy to see you live again. Happy to be back live. It's been a few weeks since we've done one of these, and last time we were recording, an episode of Binging Live, which was a lot of fun. And I considered doing that this week, but I really wanted to make General So's since uh, it's not, it's, it's less and less often that we get recipes on basics that we can, you know, quickly uh, uh, knock out in a, in a you know, hour long live stream uh, or a three, two, three hour long live stream. Thank you very much for the super chat. It's great to be back. Appreciate it. Anders gave 20 pounds sterling and said, hey Babish, you got me into cooking and this is a way for me to give back to you and your team's consistent free to watch uploads. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. The team thanks you as well in the other room. Really appreciate it. This camera is so slightly off center and I have to, I just have to fix it. I'm sorry. Ah, I can't reach it. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> it looks straight, right? What do you think? It looks pretty straight. Okay. Anders, thank you. Um, Reed K gave $10 and said, hi, I used your reverse sear recipe and my parents said it was the best steak they've ever had and didn't believe me when I said I got the recipe from a YouTube channel. My mom's watch, watched every video since. That's really, really nice. I'm very happy that you made it for your parents. I'm very happy that they liked it. And uh, thank you for sharing it. Thank you for the super chat. That's awesome. Um, I'm almost caught up here. No, I'm not. Shit, okay. Dennis, Dennis Neagle gave $10. That sounds like a trick name that's like <laughs> trying to get me to say something inappropriate. Uh, gave $10 and said, I love your channel and you've inspired me to start cooking and keep up the amazing work. That's really, really kind. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for giving cooking a try. I'm really happy that I could have played any role in that. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, Knox Marshall, Marshall gave $20 and said, hey, Babish, I just want to send a message to say thank you for helping me find a purpose in high school because of your show. I'm now going to culinary school. That's awesome. Congratulations. Good luck. Keep it up. Uh, I wish I had actually gone to culinary school, so you got way more, way more balls than I do uh, to, uh, to be going and doing that because it takes a certain kind of person to function in a professional kitchen. 
and I have nothing but admiration for it. So good luck and congratulations, and thank you so much for the super chat. And hang on to your money because you're going to school, and I want you to eat well. Uh, Brenna McNamara gave twenty. I'm sorry, gave ten dollars and said, "I love your show," and showed it to my dad who likes to cook. And I'm pretty sure he binge watched all of your videos a few nights ago. Can't wait to try um, till we try one of your recipes. That's so nice. Please tell your dad thank you. Thank you to, for showing my show to your dad. And um, keep cooking. That's awesome. Uh, let me know which one you cook. Jason Barsenas gave ten dollars and said, "I finally enlisted in the Navy, and I leave for August." I leave this August for basic. Thank you, Andrew, for giving me the courage to cook new things. That's awesome, and thank you so much for your service. That's that's really amazing. You're an ex you're a very brave person to be doing that as your line of work, and we all we all appreciate you you fighting for us. and uh, And thank you very much for your service, and thank you for the super chat. Knox Marshall is a new member. Thank you, Knox. I remember your super chat from before. Nathaniel Fry gave ten dollars and said, "Long time viewer. I'm constantly watching for new videos from you. Could you?" Possibly do a cheap and easy ramen recipes that kind of kick them up a notch, like 25 cent ramen. That's a great idea. That's something I should definitely do because that's such a staple, and uh, it'd be nice to you know have fun little ways to to kick it up a notch. And I'm sure there's some ways that um, I haven't thought of yet that might be interesting. So I'm definitely gonna check that out. Thank you so much. Uh, or I'm gonna look into that and, and see what I can do. Jake Mastera is back with uh, with with 25 dollars. Thank you so much, Jake. I don't have a question, but I realize I can use my Google Opinions balance here. I uh, just got my wedding present of an Omega Speedmaster Professional. Dream come true for me. Love your watches. Thank you so much. And that's awesome. Congratulations. That's a beautiful watch. Uh, and, uh, and congratulations on getting married. That's awesome. And that's a great wedding present to get. Darth Redneck gave $10 and said, Hello from Mississippi. I love your channel. Thank you so much. And hello from New York. Uh, I have not, have I ever been to Mississippi? No, I don't think I have. I, I need to go. I think I drove through it once when I was going to uh, New Orleans. I can't remember. I don't remember. Did we go through Mississippi? Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, there we are. Lost Sawyer. There we go. We're back. You, you got me? I can't hear you. What's happening here? It's on my end. My, my call's failing. Hmm. Let me try calling you. I'm going to keep it out this time. I'm going to keep it on the table. Sorry, folks. Sorry about that. Little little hiccup there. Um, can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Jared Spendley gave 80, I don't know what that currency is, Z-A-R. I'm not sure what that is. Um, but thank you for giving me 80 of them. Uh, hey, man, you've really inspired me uh, with, with your commitment to experimentation. Please don't sp stop. I need someone to blame my assumed crazy ideas on. Happily, I will keep going. Thank you very much for the super chat. Keep experimenting, all right? Oliver Grieve gave 10 pounds sterling and said, Hey, Babish, I just, uh, just to let you know I love your vids. I'm 17, work in a kitchen. We listen to your, to your Spotify every weekend and suggest um, things I've learned from you to the chefs. Keep up the great work. That's awesome. Glad you enjoy the Spotify. For anybody who doesn't know what it is, go check it out. Uh, Bangers with Babish is my, is my playlist of preferred cooking tunes. And uh, it's, a fun, it's a fun playlist. With a, it's, it's very eclectic, and um, it's got some, some mainstream stuff and some less mainstream stuff. It's, it's, it's a fun playlist. I hope you go check it out. And thank you for listening to it, and thank you for cooking for us. Anybody that's here that's in the restaurant industry, thank you very much for cooking for us. We all appreciate it, even if some assholes don't when they come in and don't tip right or, or mistreat service staff. We appreciate you. So thank you so much. Um, Jeff Robertson gave... Thirteen ninety nine Canadian dollars. Andrew is a photographer, and inspiring YouTuber. What lenses are you using? Sony for life. Thank you for making cooking exciting for me, brother. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the kind words. I'm using a Sony A7S Mark II with uh, this particular camera because the you know you see how shallow the depth of field field is. Um, it's a uh, uh, what is it? a Zine thirty five millimeter one point eight uh, Cine prime lens, and uh, that's what gives it the nice cinematic look. Over here, let's switch over to the stovetop cam. So, you ready, Sawyer? All right, so we're over at the stovetop now. As you can see, it's slightly less shallow depth of field. I think I want to get the same lens for over here, but this is a Zeiss 35mm uh, uh, 2.8, uh, which is a lovely lens. It's a little less expensive than the Zine over there. Uh, it's much smaller. It's a, it's a, it's a, a subcompact. <laughs> is that a word? No, it's a compact prime. No. It's not even a prime, it's just, I mean, it's prime, it's, it's a fixed lens, but it's not a compact uh, like the, uh, the, the CP2 lenses, I, I can't remember. But um, 
Thank you for uh, noticing the aesthetic. I put a lot of thought into it, and I, I went to film school, not, not culinary school, so this is where my interest l lies primarily. Um, so thank you for noticing, and let's head on back over to camera A. We should probably just do a few more questions, guys, and then, um, and then I'm going to start cooking. I, I've got, we've got so many super chats here. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can. Devin Smith gave $20 and said, love your channel. Keep doing what you do. Thank you so much, Devin. Thank you for the super chat, uh, and thank you for coming and hanging out. New member Timothy Lake. Welcome, Timothy. Uh, Dylan Snyder gave $10 and said, I've rewatched every video on your YouTube. Being a cook slash chef has been a lifelong dream of mine. I enjoy every minute of your videos. In your opinion, what's a dish to wow my executive chef? Whew, I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> I, uh, um, I mean, what I would really do is uh, make something simple really, really well. That's why most executive chefs test new time cooks with, um, or for uh, uh, new, new hires with uh, an omelet or scrambled eggs uh, because it's very, it's not difficult to do exactly right, but to, to really nail it, to do it exactly right, that takes skill and it takes practice and it takes knowledge. So, so just do something simple, but do it really well. That's, the, that's my best advice that I could give you. I'm noticing that the stream is frozen on my end, Jake. Is that just my computer? No, it's still going. Yeah, it's just my computer. All right, we're good. My bad. Um, okay, we still have some more here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through these guys. I'm very sorry. Anybody who's, who's given a super chat and that I haven't hit or am unable to hit, uh, I, I apologize. Um, Jack Bowkitt gave $22.99 Australian dollars. Have you been to Melbourne? We have some of the best food around. Come down and do an episode or two. I can't wait to get to Australia except for the spiders, man. I'm terrified of all the insects you guys got there, but I would love to go to Australia. I'd love to go to Melbourne and see what you guys got cooking, so to speak. Dogor58 gave $20 and said, greetings from Panama. Great show. I'm going to send you my grandma recipe for Cinco Leches, uh, five milks. Regards, Eduardo Hernandez Samudillo. Uh, th th thank you very much for the, for the very generous super chat. I'd love to get your recipe, so go ahead and send it to bingingwithbabish at gmail.com. I will see it. Brig Colby gave $10 and one cent. Thanks for helping me develop my cooking so I, have one, uh, so I have more opportunities to spend time with my folks over dinner. Curious to know what your pr production schedule, if you can call it that, is usually like. It is hectic, it is, um, it is uh, chaotic, and I'm trying to fix it because Right now, I'm shooting episodes that you see on Tuesdays like a day or two before they come out, and it's, it's going to kill me. So we are talking about, and this is the first place that I, I will talk about it because uh, it's very conceptual and it's very nebulous right now, but we're talking about setting up a studio space uh, and um, with some other really fun features to it that you guys might be able to actually come to um, and have a beer and have a, have a, have a bite to eat and watch me make the show uh, in Brooklyn or Long Island City. Hopefully this time next year we'll be doing something like that. It's, again, it's an idea that literally I had like last week, so we're still developing it, we're still trying to make it happen, but keep an eye out for that in summer of 2020. Uh, Dennis Neagle gave $20. Being from Colorado, I'd love to see you make Rocky Mountain oysters and green chili. Uh, I, 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 gotta work, I gotta work my way up to that. Um, I, I gotta work my way up to that, I've, I've eaten bull testicles once before, but it was ground up with a whole bunch of other beef and, or a whole, other, a whole bunch of other meat in, in the every meat burrito. And um, I didn't, I couldn't pick it out specifically, but I can't imagine that, it, that, that it's, it's as bad as I imagine it is uh, because people seem to enjoy it. Uh, Chris Dabmaster is back with $10. I'm very serious about you reaching out to my brother, my brother and me about a Munch Squad episode. Also, dogs should be able to vote. I, you know you're taking a stand for something, and I respect that. So thank you, thank you for, uh, for, for, for your super chat, and uh, I absolutely will reach out to my brother, my brother, and me. My ex-girlfriend is a huge fan of theirs, and uh, I do remember them being a lot of fun to listen to and watch. Um, we got uh, 749 rubles, R-U-B. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much for giving me 749 of those. From Bakas999, warm welcome from Russia. Um, uh, so that's, what's, what's Russian currency? I don't know. Um, warm welcome from Russia, it's past midnight, but I'd like to show my, uh, my appreciation for your work. Videos are awesome, would you like to do something re from Russian cuisine? I'd love to, uh, it's something that I really need to become better acquainted with. I'm not super familiar with Russian cuisine outside of the very standard kind of stuff, your borscht, your, uh, et cetera. Um, um, your, uh, I made that, that pasta, what's that, that Russian? Eastern European pasta I made, spa, spa, spatzel. 
Um, I, I'm a big fan of what I've had. I'd love to learn more about it, and I'd love to feature it more on the show. Thank you so much for the super chat. Lance Howard gave $20 and said, can you please make a Mountain Dew cake? I'll look into that. <laughs> I first have to make a chocolate cake, uh, a peanut butter chocolate cake with Kool-Aid. Am I right? Um, Grace Hicks gave $20 and said, hello from PA. Uh, watching your channel has inspired me to try new things and be more creative with food. Since I'm working beside my mother in the baking industry, your channel brought me closer to her. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. That's really lovely to hear. And thank you for the super chat. And please keep uh, uh, trying new things and being more creative with food. I'm very happy to have played any role in that. Thank you so much. Um, uh, be, I, can't, I, can't, I can't pronounce this name. I, can't, I don't know what currency it was, but there's a thousand of it, or 4,000 of it from Bates Chiley. Bates Chiley uh, gave 4,000 HUFs. And do, do you know what General So called his pet dog? Chicken. Is that a joke, or is that like something that's in the General So documentary or something? I have to watch that documentary, the one about General So. It's apparently a fascinating story. R, the letter R, gave 50 euros and said it's like 0 0.25 a.m., but I got a few more hours to watch you make some food again. Well, that's what I'm here to do, and that's what I'm going to get started doing here in a second, guys. Thank you so much for all the super chats. I'm going to read one more. Robert Perry gave $20 and said, love the show. Would love to see you take on some Korean dishes like Kalbi ribs. I've never tried that, and I would love to try it. Kimchi's coming up on the sh on the show. That's that's a Korean dish that we're going to be looking into. Um, and uh, yeah, no, I, I would love to do some more Korean uh, food on the show. I plan on doing bibimbap from um, Parks and Rec. So they made it over an open fire on a camping trip. So that sounds like a fun challenge. Uh, last last one. I'm just going to read the most recent one. Big Mac gave $5 and said, can you make some of the foods from the anime One Piece? I'm betting that we have a lot of new anime fans in the, in, in the chat today because of the recent uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Squid Ink Pasta. So I love hearing all the suggestions from anime because I'm not very familiar with anime. So I need your guys' help in finding those great dishes. And I've definitely heard a lot of people ask for foods from One Piece. So I'm going to look into that. You can definitely expect to see that in the future. Thank you guys so much for the super chats. I'm going to stop now because I want to get cooking. We've, been, we've already been going for half an hour here, so I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show and the kind words and the great questions. And thank you guys for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Here's to you. And uh, let me know in the comments what my next tattoo should be. Let's figure that out while I get started here. All right, time to stand up straight. I've been slouching for like half an hour right now. I'm going to move this out of the way here. I love this stuff. If you're in Nashville, go to, go to Southern Grist and check, check this stuff out because seriously, it's worth getting. I don't get a dime when they sell uh, a, a, a can of that beer. I swear I'm not trying to sell you anything. It just happens to be really quite good. Hmm. Okay. Off screen it goes. Let's get to making some general sows. That unintentionally rhymed. I wish I could do that all the time. That one too. All right. So. First, we need to make a marinade for the chicken. This involves egg whites and a few sauces, like soy sauce and Chinese cooking wine and, and um, vodka, strangely enough. This recipe comes courtesy of Jake Angie Lopez, all friend of the show. Really nice guy and super food genius. Uh, so very grateful to have him as a resource. He's really the one who kind of like taught me how to cook via the internet. Like he didn't teach me how to cook personally, but he's taught me and hundreds of thousands of others how to make their food a little better. So I'm going to grab some eggs here. I'm going to grab a discard bowl for the yolks because we're just doing whites right now. We need uh, two egg whites. Oh, these are a little funky. How much do I need for the... Nothing. Okay, don't need anything for the, for the, for the actual breading. So the egg, the egg element comes from this. So two separate egg whites, as you guys probably know. You crack them open and you just sort of toss the yolk back and forth between the two shell halves until you get all that white, eggy, whitey goodness <laughs> out of there. There we go, that's one. I'll try to save these for something else. Maybe, maybe I'll make myself some hollandaise for dinner or something. I probably won't. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be good. You know, you guys might have seen me doing the... Uh, the diet thing, and I, I went. I went to a really nice restaurant for lunch today, and because uh, I have a friend in town, so I was taking him out, and um, I did not eat very well. So I'm going to go ahead and try to rein it in tonight. Maybe eat a salad, and that doesn't generally involve hollandaise. Now, I'm going to grab a tiny whisk here. 
which is a dirty little secret about this show, is that uh, there's not one tiny whisk. He's, he's, not a, he's not a character. He's got lots and lots of stunt doubles. So I'm sorry if that ruined your, your opinion of Tiny Whisk as a, as a character on this show, but he's, um, you know, he's, he, 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 he can't do all the work all the time, you know? He's, he, he's got to have a little help. Um, so I'm just beating these egg whites until they're a little frothy. I don't really know what this step is for, honestly, especially because once you add the soy sauce and the, and the um, cooking wine, the vodka, it just like completely kills the bubbles. But, you know, again, this is Jay Kenji we're talking about here. If he tells me to beat the egg whites until they're frothy, guess what I'm going to do? Exactly that. So as you can see, I'm just sort of going in a circular motion. If I turn this way, you can see the direction the tiny whisk is moving. And that's to really incorporate air into the egg whites so they get a little frothier. Because if you just mix them like this, they're not going to get frothy. You've got to sort of toss them up in the air a little bit as you're beating them. And as you can see, they're getting nice and bubbly. Again, don't know why we're doing this, but we are. Story of my life. Okay. There we go. Those are nice and frothy. Let's call it there. I'm going to keep this out here to, to mix with. So next up is uh, three tablespoons of dark soy sauce, which I have right there. Let me grab my tablespoon. And I should like up the amount that I'm doing because last time I didn't have enough sauce. So I'm just going to, I'm going to up everything just a little bit. Is this soy Yeah, it's soy sauce. Yeah, I could just, I could have just looked at the label. I didn't have to smell it. That was weird. Let's do three tablespoons of this. Two. See, it's already killing the foam, so I really don't know what the purpose of that is, but three tablespoons of soy sauce. <coughs> three tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. This is, I don't know the, how to pronounce this, honestly. Shaozing? Sha, 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 so you lived in uh, China for a while. How do you pronounce that city of Shaozing? One. Um, two. Shaozing? Xiaojing? I don't know. Xi'an? We don't know. She, we don't no. know. <laughs> we don't know. So, Sawyer didn't live in, in Xiaozing. If that's even a place, it might just be the name of the cooking wine. I thought it was named after the place, but I could be dead wrong as per usual. Uh, three tablespoons of vodka is next. I know how to pronounce that. Where's my vodka? Here we go. Oh, looks like I probably have just enough left here. This is the good stuff. I don't want to be putting this in a marinade. I should be putting like the real cheap junk in here. One. Now I know I know I know why vodka's in here. I believe it it, it, it hinders gluten development, if I remember correctly. Um, that's why it's very good for using in pie crusts and stuff like that. Um, so there we go. That's the vodka. Now we need to add some dry stuff, and then it's chicken time. Let's get quarter teaspoon of baking soda. That's such a small amount that I have no idea what that could possibly do. But again, I trust my man. Where, where's my, oh here it is. And quarter teaspoon is such a small amount, I'm just gonna sort of eyeball it. I don't feel like getting my, my quarter teaspoon dirty. That's probably about a quarter teaspoon right there. I really doubt that, that getting that totally incorrect would really mess things up. I just can't imagine. Um, and now we need three tablespoons of cornstarch. That I'll measure out because cornstarch is such a fickle ingredient. If you add too much, it'll make things way too thick. If you add too little, it won't do its job. So I am going to measure this out. One. And I altered his recipe a little bit because I, I feel like it didn't yield enough sauce. Um, and this time, also, I'm going off the map because I'm going to use uh, chicken breast instead of thigh because I don't know why they use dark meat in making uh, general sows and you, at, at a lot of Chinese takeout places you can specify white meat uh, for like an extra dollar or whatever and I just it's just always way better for me, to me deep fried dark meat um, without a bone and we, you know you're, you're only frying this for like less than four minutes you're frying this for like two to three minutes until it's just cooked and that's not enough time to like make dark meat acceptable. <laughs> it's not enough time to cook it. And it keeps it tough. And also it shrinks more than, than white meat, I feel like. I mean, that just might be my opinion. I don't know if it's true. But I feel like the muscle fibers contract more and it ends up smaller. And you end up with a smaller piece of chicken with more breading. And it's just like, that's like the worst thing you could have with General Tso's is just like this over breaded 
chicken. It's just disgusting. So, okay, we got our, I'm probably, I'm probably igniting some passionate commenters right now with my, with my uh, sacrilege talk of General So's talking about white meat here. Um, but that's just the way I want to do it today. And that's the key with cooking, is that you can really make these things the way you want to. You don't have to do what some, some audience of people is telling you to do. If they don't like it, then you know they, they don't have to eat it. But don't cook your steaks over medium rare. That I will take, uh, I will take issue with. Though I will say in steak houses, whoa, in steak houses, I tend to order uh, my steak medium rare plus if they give me the option because I really like. Uh, I, th I, th I think that that most restaurants and steak houses tend to undercook their steak. If you ask for medium rare, you're going to get rare essentially, and rare is just. No I'm I'm rambling like crazy here. I should take a look at some <laughs> some super chats so I'm not just sitting here talking to myself about steak done this. How do I even get on this? What do we got here? Any, any cool questions that I missed? We, we have a, f oh, uh, let's see, we got a 20, oh no, these are from before. Okay, uh, Jake, any cool questions or interesting queries I'm missing here? Um, I uh, appreciate people saying that the mic is muted. I think that's a funny thing to try and trick us into thinking. I'm pretty sure it's not, but. Uh, that's funny, guys. That, that's, you guys that's are funny. funny. Um, a, lot of <laughs> a lot of pronunciations. We appreciate all those. Thank you. Sh shushing. Shashing, that sounds about right, probably. Um, and just so you guys know what I'm doing over here, I'm cutting this into about one inch cubes if I can. They can be a little bigger if you want, but the breading really makes these expand a lot. So you can kind of, you can kind of keep them a little small. Um, man, I love this knife. So I'm just cutting these into, you know, just picture what General Tso's looks like. It looks like that on the plate, you know, maybe a little bigger. So you want something you can be able to eat in one bite. Nobody wants to eat half a piece of uh, General Tso's at a time. Um, this guy's a little small, so I'm just going to cut him in half. And try to trim off any fat or junk like this. Like, nobody wants that. Nobody wants to eat that. That's not good eats, as my man Alton would say. I just found out that Alton Brown is following me on Instagram, which is like the most exciting thing in the world. So I'm just waiting, biding my time to find the right moment to strike there to do some kind of collab with him. Because he's, he's YouTube facing. He's, he's, a, um, he's a forward thinking fellow. So I'd love to have him on the show. But I don't want to, to, to time it wrong or whatever. Okay, so. Let's get these in half here. No extraneous fat or anything like that. And um, then we're just going to drop this in the marinade. And it's just going to marinate for probably like 20 minutes tops while we make the sauce and prep the oil and prep the breading. It's, it's really a great system. Like in, in the end, this only takes like about 45 minutes total. It's going to take me longer because I'm talking to you guys and because, you know, I got to focus on cameras being right and all that good stuff. I mean, the, the guys in the other room are doing a lot of that for me, but you know, if something needs, if I need to rack focus or if I need to uh, find my ingredients because I didn't do my mise en place very well, which is a true story, I didn't. Um, you know, it can uh, complicate things. So, good stuff. We're just getting this into one inch pieces. For those of you just joining us, we're making General Tso's chicken live. Um, it's something that we like to do every other week if possible, but uh, sometimes the recipes don't allow, sometimes our schedules don't allow. You know, we're, uh, we're all young professionals here. We, we, get, we got busy schedules, but we're mostly just trying to make content for you guys. And as I mentioned earlier, we're really hoping that uh, this time next year there's going to be a, um, a, a uh, brick and mortar location where you can come and check out what we're doing live. That is the hope, but uh, obviously trying to figure that out. So into the marinade, the chicken goes, and I'm gonna give it a little toss just to make sure that everybody's coated. We want everybody to have equal exposure to the marinade. Don't want any pieces that are pressed up against the side of the glass or pressed up against another piece so it's not getting full exposure. And make sure it's just totally submerged. There we go. And I should have poured out a little bit of that. That was stupid, but it's, it's not too late, so. Um, I, 
you're supposed to pour out, you know, maybe a, a quarter cup of the marinade uh, to use in the breading, which I'll explain in a moment. And it's not too late because it doesn't matter that the chicken's in there because uh, everything's getting cooked. Everything's getting cooked anyway, so it's, uh, it's not hazardous. Okay, and now I'm just gonna clean up my workstation a little bit because we got some raw chicken. So I'm setting that aside. You can cover it if you're feeling paranoid, but I'm not. There's nothing flying around my kitchen right now. We're, it's only going for, you know, 20, 25 minutes. So nothing's gonna hurt it when it's sitting out there. And to sanitize a uh, wood cutting board, I like to use this. This is just uh, vinegar. Vinegar should work as an effective cleaning agent when dealing with nasty stuff like salmonella and whatnot. And you don't want to use harsh cleaning compounds on your wooden cutting board. It will dry it out, it will warp it, it will discolor it. So vinegar is a great way to clean up your wood cutting surfaces. And I do recommend wood once you have the time and the energy to take care of it because it does require a little bit of maintenance. I gotta oil this guy about once every two weeks, but I do use it very often. $10 from Keith C. Any thoughts on more healthy basics videos? I'd like to see them on specific diets. Uh, yeah, totally. Definitely gonna be doing more healthy basics. I gotta come up with some more, um, some more concepts. Keto is a great idea, but I really wanna make um, healthy basics that appeal to every, anybody who just wants to be a little healthier because keto is the answer for some people. It's not the answer for everybody. Um, so I, I want something that's a little bit more universal, uh, but uh, th that is a very good idea and expect more healthy basics soon. God, it's hot in here. I need to turn, it, turn up the AC. Um, Philip per Parida uh, gave $10 and said, love your videos. They really helped me out in making some amazing food. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much for the kind words. Um, one more and then I'm gonna get back to it. Nicholas Miranda gave $5 and said, what is your all around favorite knife brand? Also, I would totally pay to come see where everything is shot. Well, hopefully you won't have to pay to actually come there, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that another time. But uh, uh, my favorite all-around knife brand is probably Vustoff. I, I know I use a shun a lot on the show, and I love their chef's knife, but Vustoff makes, makes uh, my favorite just day-to-day uh, -day knives uh, here and there. Um, all right, so let's... The, they're saying there's a spider on camera. Is there, are they messing with me? I don't like that. <laughs> they are messing with us. They're saying that That's the spider not very nice. is is uh, spinning a web under the bowl with the chicken inside. But I don't think that's true. Oh, no, that's true. No, that's true. There's a, there, yeah, no, that's my pet spider, guys. Yeah, no, that's, 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 uh, that's, Rick, that's Ricky. That's Be on Ricky, the lookout for the spider. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared. God, they're fucking good. They're good at, they're good at messing. <laughs> okay, um, let me put this beer back in the fridge here. Okay, so one more. Okay. Mm. Next up, we need to make... Sauce. So, grab my vust off here. And uh, we need um, some scallions for the sauce. We need scallions and we need garlic and we need ginger. So let me grab my ginger out the fridge here. Where's my ginger? There it is. <laughs> it's gotta be the least professional cooking show in the world. You ever seen a cooking show where somebody's like digging through their fridge? Like, darn it. Darn it, Jeffrey, where's the ginger? That was, my, that was my Ina Garten impression because she's married to a man named Jeffrey. Um, here we go. Eh, nice little two inch knob like that, that's good. I'll do it. Okay. Now, we need some scallions, prim primarily the, uh, the whites. I'm probably gonna get like, I don't know, like six of these. The best looking ones, even though it doesn't really matter, they're all getting chopped up. That's, uh, that's five, and that's six. Okay. There we go. Now, got that, and now we need some garlic. Let's crunch that guy open. We just need, uh, Kenji calls for one clove. Double check that, but I think Kenji calls for one clove. I like to use two. I like a little bit more garlic. Oh, four, four cloves. Maybe he called for three. I remember upping it, so maybe he called for three and I upped it to four or something. But yeah, I'll do four. There we go. And we're gonna finally slice the scallions, we're going to, and then we're gonna grate the ginger and the garlic. Um, 
And what I'm doing right now is stupid. I have this weird thing where I like to peel garlic by hand, but not when I have an audience of people watching live. You know, that's what, I, that's what I do in my free time when I'm like alone. So we're not gonna do that right now. I'll do the, the, the quick peeling tricks for now because people are watching. Otherwise, you better trust that I'd be peeling those by hand. So the, as you, for anybody who's kind of new to the show, one of the best uh, tricks for peeling garlic is to put it down on the table, drop your knife on it, give it a little tap, and ta-da, out it goes. This guy's got a little gnarly bit on him. Let's take that off. Yeah, there we go. If you got a little gnarly bit on your garlic, just chop it off. You don't gotta throw the whole thing away, unless it's like rotting, unless there's mold, but that was just a little brown spot. We're just chopping it off. All right, so same deal here. Tap, tap, nope, oh, one more. And they just jump out their skins. I don't know why I don't do this in my, uh, on my own time. Like I just, I like peeling it. I like getting it perfect. Something very satisfying about that to me. There we go. Well, that's why, because now I can't grate this. <laughs> it's, it's all smushed up, so I can't grate it. I'll crush it, that's what I'll do. I'll crush the garlic. All right, I'm gonna wash my hands a little bit. Just get the garlic gunk off them. All right, and for scallions, there's generally not much of a need to wash scallions if you do this one trick that doctors hate. This one weird trick. First, I'm just gonna peel these down a little bit. They got some kind of gnarly stuff. But if you peel off the outermost layer, it's kind of like an onion. You wouldn't wash an onion. And it's the same kind of deal with, with scallions. If you peel off the outermost layer, which I'll show you how I do generally, then you should be in good shape. I'm just gonna kill all the roots of these at one time. What did I name the spider before, Ricky? That's a good name for a spider, yeah. I've become a lot less afraid of spiders over the past few years and much more afraid of cockroaches because it's New York City and those are much more prevalent of villain. All right, so then to peel off the outermost layer, you can literally just like find the smallest branch here and peel it off and then that will take with it the outermost layer of the scallion so you can cook knowing that you got a nice clean scallion. So that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a good way to do that. So again, got the smallest sort of branch of the, I don't even know what you call it, branch of the scallion. Um, and then that just lets you access the outermost layer. You peel it right off and you got a nice, nice clean scallion. If you want to use these parts back here, I'd wash them. I, I would run a little water in there because there could be dirt inside of here, but we're not going that far up the scallion in this case. So I'm just going to do these. And the last time I made uh, this, this general sews for everybody. Um, I put a whole bunch of those, um, those arbol chilies in there, the dried arbol chilies. And those things, maybe somebody can shed some light on this because I ate two or three of them whole and enjoyed them thoroughly. And then a few hours passed and it was a little late and I was a little drunk. And I was like, I'm gonna eat one of these chilies that was just sort of sitting there. They had like sat out for, I don't know, three, four hours. And uh, you know, it was like chilies, what, what could possibly happen? And I ate it and it almost killed me. It was the hottest pepper I've ever, it, was, it felt like I had eaten a ghost pepper and I've eaten a ghost pepper, so I know what, the, what it feels like. And I don't know, can, 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 I, I, I cannot imagine that chili peppers could get hotter just from sitting out. I, I think they could get hotter if they were still alive and if they were growing, but these were dried peppers. There's gotta be a set amount of capsaicin in them, but it was inexplicable. And it, it, it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't just the one pepper. Myself, my girlfriend, and two of uh, um, my camera guys also ate them, and we all burned our faces off. We were all dying. It might've been like a collective, um, What's, what's, that, what's that word for when like, you know, somebody on a plane thinks that they have food poisoning so everybody gets food poisoning? Uh, the um, mass hysteria, maybe it was mass hysteria between, uh, between the, the, the four of us, but uh, I don't know, it's felt pretty real to me. And I had just been on hot ones and uh, that didn't help me one tiny bit. All right, I'm just gonna cut this nubbin off so it's a little easier to peel the ginger. See if my vegetable peeler is where it's supposed to be. It is. Happy day. 
You can also use a spoon to peel um, ginger, but it's harder than it looks, and I just prefer to use a vegetable peeler. It's just easier. Sorry. I know it helps you get into all the little nooks and crannies, but I just try to find ginger at the market that isn't too nook and cranny infested. You know what I mean? It is also a little perilous to do this with a vegetable peeler because you bring the blade awfully close to your fingers and you absolutely can slip and you absolutely can cut yourself, but just be careful. Take your time. It's not like you got an internet w audience of how many people? Of 10,000. What's up, folks? Thanks for joining us today. 10,000 people are watching. We're making General Says Chicken for anybody who's just joining us. Um, we're making General Says Chicken from Basics two weeks ago, a, an episode that we shot, edited, and uploaded in the same 24-hour period, which I was very proud of, because um, we, we realized we didn't have any Basics episodes left, and uh, it was Wednesday, and we, were, we, we shoot Basics, in a, um, we batch shoot it. Uh, before I continue telling the story, let me just tell you what I'm doing. Make sure this is focus. We need focused scallions. Um, we're just uh, thinly slicing these scallions. I'm gonna slice most of the whites and then get a little bit of the green stuff and then I'm gonna separate the two because the greens are better for, for garnish and the whites are gonna be better for the sauce. So let's go ahead and slice those pretty thin. It's more important to slice them thin for the sauce than for the, um, than for the garnish. The garnish you can be a little chunkier if you want. So that's pretty good for the sauce right there. We just want a few tablespoons worth. There we go. We're getting all of our mise en place done here. I never do that. Or do it right at least. And now I'm just gonna kill a couple inches of those just so it's a little greener. I want some nice green stuff for the, uh, for the garnish. It's, it's a nice contrast against the red, or the orangey kind of red of the sauce. And that's gonna be perfect for garnish right there. So we got this nice color contrast here. That's good. I'm gonna hang on to those for soup. It's good to make stock out of your leftover scallions. And there we go. That's all the vegetables I believe we need to make the sauce. Let me double check. Soy sauce, cooking wine, rice wine vinegar, chicken stock, sugar, sesame seed oil, cornstarch, scallions, four cloves of garlic, two inch piece of ginger. Beautiful. And then we got our uh, arbold chilies right here. These hot little bastards. So, um, we're ready to cook. Let us head on over to the stovetop. Let's go. Here we are at the stovetop. <laughs> um, oh, geez, do I have oil? I don't have any uh, vegetable oil, so I'm just gonna have to, I, have to, I used all that I have left for the tiny little, little uh, inch of, of deep frying oil there, so I'm gonna have to use olive oil, which is not like ideal. I wouldn't recommend this. Um, generally in Chinese cooking. I don't know if there's many applications for olive oil. I might be wrong. That might be a standard thing. But anyway, we're just going to drop this in here. Oh, you know, before we do this, we have to pre-make the liquid element of the sauce. Let's head back over to camera A. I'm going to get these guys out the way. That's for garnish later, so that can just stay there forever until we're ready to use it. Uh, we got some ginger. Uh, while I'm getting this ready, Jake, any fun questions, any fun comments, any Bills fans? <clears throat> yeah, actually. Um, one of the earlier uh, Super Chats referenced getting your book and how he might be able to get it signed. Uh, that guy oh. was a Sabres fan. Go Sabres. I think it was <laughs> Timothy Lake, new member. Um, Welcome, we're <clears throat> we're going to have a bunch of public... Uh, appearances coming up around the release of the book. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it to Rich Stadium, Buffalo Bills, Buffalo, I New York, or your Park. I, I don't think we but, will, but for now, the stops on the book tour uh, include L.A., San Francisco, Boston, Chicago, um, Austin, Austin and Boston, um, Nashville, and Atlanta. So you can expect... And here in New York City, I believe there are three different dates here in New York City, so you can expect to find me and the boys there. I will be signing books, and uh, that will be October 22nd through November 1st, or uh, September, October, November 1st. And um, so th that isn't public yet, so I will be announcing tour dates and locations in the near future. Thank you so much for being a Sabres fan, man. Anybody else? 
Um, yeah, a couple others. Uh, a, a quick shout out to R, who has been dropping dollars like crazy. He uh, oh wants you to he wants you to kill the spider. But Ricky's a friend now, so Ricky lives. He'll be around. No, Ricky's a yeah. friend of the show. Keep, Sorry. Keep an eye out for him. <laughs> um, I'll keep an eye out for Ricky. You guys genuinely have me paranoid that there's a spider. It's not. It's not fair. Um, oh, in and in and out is back. In and out. What's up? You I remember In and Out with an hundred dollar. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, I think In-N-Out. I think he I think he asked this before too. The hamburger from Eddie Murphy's raw. Can you teach us how to make the hamburger from Eddie Murphy's raw? I I th- that is what you I think that is what he asked last time. Thank you so much for the incredibly generous super chat. Um, I remember you giving a hundred dollars last time because you wanted to see me make the the hamburger. So you must really want to see that. And that is a recipe, so I, it's not really out of, out of the question to do that. So let me, let me listen to that bit again and see how specific it is. And it sounds like it's kind of nasty. It doesn't sound like it's really good. The whole idea is that it's well, way worse than McDonald's. But let me take a look into that. Um, all right, let's make some sauce. We got uh, four tablespoons of soy sauce coming up here. Oh, no, my tablespoons are all dirty. Hang on. Do a quick rinsey rinse over here. Just rinse this guy off. Okay. There we go. Now, let's get our sauce going. And then after that, I'm gonna get the um, breading going and we'll be ready to go. Um, Four tablespoons of dark soy sauce. This is the darkest I got, so that's what we're going with. Ejuan. Oh, oh, oh. We're almost out here, okay. I have, I have more. Hang on. Don't worry, guys. I got more. Ricky, where's my, where's my soy sauce? Ricky? Ricky, are you okay? Oh, Ricky's dead. I'm sorry. I squashed him. Hang on. Let me get the soy sauce real quick. Sorry for hopping off camera. I'm still here, folks. Don't go nowhere. Be right back. There's plenty of soy sauce to go around. So that was about two and a half, so I'm going to be a little generous. Three and a little extra just because why not. Uh, soy sauce, cooking wine. This is, I, do, you, do you remember the pronunciation? I lost it. Shashing. Shashing cooking wine. One, two, three, four tablespoons of shashing cooking wine or Chinese cooking wine. There's also clear Chinese cooking wine. There's a, I have a much lighter one back there. I'm not entirely sure which one you're supposed to use, but just given the darkness of, um, of General So's sauce, this one just worked better, so I think it's the right one. We'll find out. Um, it tasted really good, so I will, I assume that it's the right one. And then we got some rice wine vinegar here, uh, three tablespoons worth. Ejuan, two, it's three. Three tablespoons, and then we need four. I don't know why I'm using tablespoons, because four tablespoons is a quarter cup, so I could just be doing that. That's a silly thing. And now we need four tablespoons of chicken stock. I bet Kenji would say something like, you know, homemade chicken stock. But if we're talking about four tablespoons, I don't think that you need to go homemade uh, in, 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 a, in a sauce like this. I really can't imagine it'll make that much of a difference. This almost seems like it's in there to provide a little bit of extra flavor and body. So I'm sure that using homemade would be better, but I really doubt that I would know the difference in the blind taste test. Um, okay, come on. Come on. Oh, what else is going on, folks? The uh, Vinny's hard at work on the next episode of Being, which um, will be coming out in a couple weeks. Uh, we go to Nashville this time. We were in... Um, we were in uh, Louisville, Kentucky on the Bourbon Trail last episode. This episode, we are in Nashville working with a butcher to, to uh, make, give, 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 give this very sweet little girl named Ella the, the day of her life and help out her family a little bit. And it's all thanks to you guys. It's all thanks to the folks in Nashville who came and helped out and who uh, bought tickets to an event. So it, it's really exciting because it's, it's, it's an event that was made by you guys and that was funded and was... Uh, and, and, and it's a life that has been changed by you guys. So it's really, it's really, really exciting. Um, 
All right, then uh, a couple more things we need. We need a quarter cup of sugar in here, a lot of sugar in, it's, it's less sugar th than what would be in real General Tso's. Like they use a shit ton of sugar in that. So we're, we're going lighter because I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I don't like it when, uh, when General Tso's is like cloyingly sweet, you know? So it's, it's nice to go a little bit lighter. Uh, that's about a quarter cup right there. Go a little light, there we go. Quarter cup of sugar, and uh, now we need a teaspoon of roasted sesame seed oil. This stuff rocks. Uh, it tastes, it, it smells and tastes like just Chinese food. It just, it, it, it is like the, the best food additive that I can think of for maximum flavor. It just smells like roasted sesame seeds, as you might imagine. Um, and I didn't use it in the original recipe, so I'm, I'm very curious to see what kind of difference it's gonna make. We're adding a teaspoon of this. I'll measure it out. I don't want to overdo it because you overdo something like this, you can't, you can't undo it. You know what I mean? So this is a half teaspoon. A one. A two. So that's a teaspoon there. And then a tablespoon of cornstarch. And then we are ready to start making sauce. We're ready to start making breading. Um, I'm just going to whisk that in there. I need, I need the tablespoon back again. Sorry, folks. One moment. Nicely rinsed, there we go. Rinse that up and we need cornstarch, here we go. Let me get this really dry, I don't wanna get any moisture into the, into the, the cornstarch vessel here. Oh, happy Thursday everybody, everybody excited for the weekend? I'd imagine, I am. Uh, my, uh, I, uh, my girlfriend is out of town this weekend so I'm gonna be rolling around in my underwear and doing what I want, I'm kidding. I, I, I can do that anyway. Uh, so, anywho, uh, we got a tablespoon of uh, cornstarch in there. Let's lose this. I'm going to tiny whisk that in there. Again, I'm very sorry for anybody who's just finding this out, but there's more than one tiny whisk. There is several. And it's thanks to my, my, my dad. He gave me um, for Christmas, and I didn't know it was him. I didn't find out for like months afterwards that he had sent, uh, I got a package in the mail and it was full of tiny whisks and tiny rubber spatulas. And I was like, what angel sent me this? It turns out it was my dad. It's like the last person I expected, honestly. Not because he's not a good guy, but like he, he's not, he's, he, he doesn't strike me as the most um, whimsical guy with gifts. And that was a very whimsical gift. Uh, so um, he, is a, he is a great guy, but uh, I just didn't expect him to get me a bunch of tiny stuff. <laughs> That's not very Doug Ray-like, wouldn't you agree, Sawyer? Sawyer's oh, 100%. Not he's, he's a very way, pragmatic way too guy. Small. Yeah. Way too small. He'd be like, how do you even use this? Um, but no, j Dad, just in case you're watching, thank you so much for the tiny whisks. Appreciate it. And that is our sauce base, which is going to be added to the sauteed vegetables once they are done cooking. Last thing we need to do is get our breading station ready because I want everything all done and ready to go ah, in time for dinner. So I like breading in this nice wide uh, uh, casserole. It's, it's a, um, a couple little dusties in there. Maybe I'll give this a little wipe down. Um, I like uh, breading in this big old casserole because it makes it easier to just get everything in there at once, which is very helpful in just getting the same consistency because if you bread your chicken one or two pieces at a time, by the end of it, your breading is gonna have an entirely different consistency than when you started. And it's going to just give you inconsistent results. So if you do it all at once, it helps all of your chicken kind of look the same, feel the same. It's a good system. All right, so into this casserole. Sorry, that was probably pretty loud. It's going one cup of all purpose. I feel like I didn't have enough breading last time. I might up this a little bit. Maybe we'll do one and a half cups of each. All right, let me get a cup measure here. There we go, That's one cup. And let's begin. I'm gonna do one and a half cups just to, just to be safe. It's, uh, you can't have too much breading. There we go. That's one. Nope. And a little over, again, we're doing, we're doing more than is necessary. That's kind of nice to be able to do. 
And then we're mixing that with equal parts, one and one half cups of cornstarch. Oop, I'm getting it everywhere. There's one. Get it, get it, get on out of there. And a half cups. Get out of there. Of cornstarch. That is done. I wish we could have music on during this, but we can't because it's uh, you know copyright infringement. Um, I'm gonna have more beer. Are you guys okay on beer in there? I'd take a little more beer. All right, I'm gonna crack one open. Come on in whenever you're ready. This, for those of you who are just joining us, is my collaborative beer with Southern Grist. It's called Moon Crane. It's a Fraser themed beer made with uh, Cherry's Jubilee, vanilla, and Cherry's I Jubileed myself, vanilla and marshmallows. And it is friggin' delicious. And we are enjoying some because why not? Oh, Sawyer's back with the, mar with the ceremonial martini glasses. There we go. Oop, that was my fault that time. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for doing such a great job in there, both of y'all. All right. Ah, into this goes a teaspoon of baking powder. Not soda, powder. So let's get a teaspoon of this going in here. And since I did a, t a, a, a cup and a half of flour and cornstarch instead of a um, cup, guess how much we're putting in there? That's right, a teaspoon and a half. That goes in there and then teaspoon of kosher salt, or in our case, a teaspoon and a half. Boop. And then I'm going to grab a few tablespoons worth. Well, first I'm, first I'm gonna whisk this together until homogenous. Just wanna get it, all the ingredients evenly distributed so we don't have pockets of um, cornstarch or pockets of uh, salts or anything like that. We want to have a nice homogenous mixture here. There we go. Getting it done. Getting it done right. I'm gonna pull up the, super, the chat here so I can take a look at what people are saying while I'm doing this. ADB Rules said, man, no one ever come up here to Anchorage, Alaska. ADB Rules just spent $20 to tell people not to come to Anchorage, Alaska. Alaska. And uh, I'd love to go to Anchorage, Alaska, but you know, I have to do as is ordered of me by the super chat. So I guess I'm not going, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but uh, thank you for the super chat, man. Appreciate it. Josh Ratcliffe gave fourteen ninety nine Australian dollars. Your content is amazing, especially being with Babish. Thank you so much, man. The team in the other room and I are the ones that make being with Babish happen. It is a big collaborative effort that takes a whole lot of time, money, and resources, and blood, sweat, and tears. So we really appreciate hearing that you guys enjoy it. Really appreciate it. Um, then we got uh, over here, we got $5 from Fish Happens. <laughs> I'll take a beer. All right, if you were here, Fish Happens, I like your username as well. Uh, I would absolutely give you a beer, but you're not, I'm sorry. Um, okay, then the last thing we gotta do is um, we have to make this breading a little chunky. How are we gonna do that, you might ask? Well, if you've seen the basics episode or if you've seen my recent KFC episode, you will know that by adding a few tablespoons of the reserve marinade, and before anybody freaks out about like, you know, this has raw chicken in it or whatever, yes it does, but it's getting cooked. So don't worry about it. We're just gonna take some of this marinade that raw chicken is indeed sitting in right now. I'm gonna probably do about three tablespoons worth. This is what we did with the KFC as well with the buttermilk marinade after the chicken had been going for, I think it was 24 hours. Uh, do maybe about, four, do like four tablespoons here. This marinade is separated a little bit because I guess the um, cornstarch has, uh, set, has sort of risen to the top here. And yeah, there we go, just four nice tablespoons there. And then all we gotta do is mix that in a little bit. And that is gonna create all these little chunks of breading in the breading. <laughs> and that, is going to give our chicken the kind of craggly, crunchy, chunky sort of exterior that, uh, that, 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 that sesame chicken, General Tso's chicken has. It has that, that, those little sort of bumps all over it. And that's coming from 
little drips of marinade in the breading in a restaurant environment, you'd have those in there naturally because you'd be breading chicken all day. So drips of marinade are going to end up in there and it's just going to naturally happen. But here at home, when we're making much smaller batches, you got to kind of, you got to kind of engineer this. Um, and this is a great way to do it. It w works also works really well with, you know, traditional Southern fried chicken. So give it a shot. I only, can only wholeheartedly recommend it. And once we got it down to like, it's the size of, I don't know, size of BBs? What's a, what's a comparable thing that's the size of what we're going for here? Uh, just little, little guys, you can see it's like, it's like slightly chunky flour. Um, and I'm just gonna clean my hands off here and then we're ready to move on to our sauce. And then once the sauce is done, we get to frying. And this is going to be a nicely timed live stream here. I generally like to hit like two hours, and I think we're going to hit that right on the nose. Um, you know, we've done live streams up to like four hours, and God, they are exhausting. Uh, just, for, you know, cooking is tiring enough, but to, to also, you know, keep a conversation going, it's, uh, it, it, it can be a little stressful. But I, love, I do love doing it. I love hanging out with you guys. I love reading Super Chats as well. Grace Jeremy gave... Twenty-two ninety-nine in Australian dollars. Thanks for teaching us how to make pasta alla olio. I make it every week now. And thank you for inspiring me to cook more. There's your pasta alla olio right there. And I love hearing that. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm really happy that, it's, that the show's got you cooking more. That's why I make it. And uh, you guys inspire me. Um, I really appreciate you, sa you saying that I inspire you because you guys really inspire me. Uh, mm. Okay, that's good. And again, if you're just joining us, this is the Southern Grist Collaborative Beer, which if you are in Nashville, go check it out, it's, a lot of, it's very good. Senor Montique gave $5.69. Please consider Japanese pizza from Code Gias. Gias, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna look into it. Thank you for the idea, thank you for the super chat. Um, Isa M gave $5 and said, is there a benefit to using tiny whisk over what most people would consider a normal sized whisk? I love he said most people would consider normal sized whisk. <laughs> I, I don't think there's, there's anyone so small that they would look at a tiny whisk and be like, that's a normal sized whisk. <laughs> um, uh, I, I like it uh, for some applications for making small batches of sauce. You're able to whip it around really fast and you're able to really get into corners and dig deep and, and you know, sometimes it is a more practical tool. I, I know it's cute, but I swear that sometimes it's better to use than a regular sized whisk. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the question. Experience Music gave $10 and said, Hi, I'm about to graduate with a BS in, astrophys in, uh, in astrophysics, but I hate it and want a creative job. Love music, writing, and politics. Have emailed Good Mythical Morning, Game, Grumps, and DeFranco looking for a job. Any tips? Heart from Experience Music. Um, I mean, keep writing, you know, and uh, demonstrate, you know, M make a video. Show, show that, like, I, I, you might be making videos, I'm not sure, but like, Anybody who wants to become a YouTuber, make videos, you know? Like, it's great to work for YouTubers, for sure. I mean, I, I don't know, the guys in the other room can tell you. I, I guess I, 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 they'd know better than me. But um, it's, it's, you know, I, most people that I know that work in the industry that work for other YouTubers were making YouTube videos themselves. So make your own videos, show that you have the drive and the initiative and the ability to do it. It takes a lot of practice, it takes, it takes some know-how, but you can do it, um, and uh, good luck, and just keep it up. Um, okay, all right, all right. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm gonna miss some super chats here, guys, I'm very sorry, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna start breading some chicken here, I'm gonna start making some sauce. Let's head over to the, t to the stove top. And just so you guys know, I can't see the computer over here, I can't see the chat, so if there's spiders crawling on my uh, apron, or spiders in my, on my hands, uh, you know, I don't know that. Uh, yeah, we'll <laughs> be on the lookout for the spiders. Um, yeah. The, that Game Grumps, though, I just learned about them today because uh, someone on the subreddit recommended a coffee from one of their video games. What was the name of that video game, Sawyer? Um, oh, I can't quite recall the Dream Daddy. Name. Yeah, Dream Daddy. Anybody Dream play Daddy. Dream Daddy out there? That's not, that's not a video game, that's my nickname. I'm kidding. <laughs> but th that seems like it was an intensely popular game. Like it, it, it was like on top of the Steam charts and stuff. 
And I love the theme song from the trailer. That theme song rocked. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but it was catchy. Um, all right, so let me just look at the recipe here before we go too much further. I'm, bo I'm back over at camera A, sorry. Um, okay, make the sauce, shallow bacon dish, make the sauce, da, 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 da. saute the scallions, garlic, ginger, saute for one minute, and add the chilies. Okay, so I'm going to, uh oh, where's my garlic press? Uh oh, please tell me it's not in the dishwasher. I really need that garlic press right now. I guess I don't need it that bad. Let me turn down the heat over here. I'll just turn it off. I'm just going to mince up this garlic and this ginger over here quick before we head over the stove top because I don't know where my garlic press is and I don't feel like cleaning it. That's for darn, sh that's for darn sure. So let me wipe this down super quick. <laughs> and a, lo a lot of folks, you know, watch my show and think, um, and before anybody freaks out that's just joining us, this is just vinegar. Not going to hurt the food. Just vinegar. Um, it, it, it's, it's very funny to me that a lot of people think like, how do you keep such an immaculate kitchen and you cook so quickly and amazing? And I'm like, I have a messy kitchen and I do not cook quickly at all. You guys are seeing the sort of real time amount of, the, the amount of time it takes to cook in my kitchen. Uh, there's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of sort of like, oop, where's the, oop, oop. And you know, I cut all that stuff out in the edit. That's why it looks so smooth and clean and easy. But uh, it's not as easy. Uh, or it's, it's not as um, seamless as it looks. I just want you guys to know that so you're not discouraged when you try it yourselves and it's not going so smooth because, uh, you know, it can, we all make mistakes and that's part of the, that's part of the process. You gotta make s mistakes to, to be a better cook. It's the only way to do it. That or you need to go to culinary school like my man, I can't remember his name, but um, the gentleman who super chatted me earlier told me he's going to culinary school. Congratulations again and good luck, dude. And really, I want to crush this garlic. Or I could grate it. I'm going to grate it. What am I doing? No, I'm not going to grate it. What am I doing? Come on. <laughs> see? See, this is what it's actually like. All right, so I'm just uh, finely mincing this garlic as finely as I can, and then I'm just going to roughly hand chop it once I've got it minced. Ah, oh, my fingers. Okay. Man, guys, it really freaks me out that something's going to happen to my hands or my fingers one day. I'm out of a job if that happens, you know? Like, what if... I don't know. Never mind. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> but, like, uh, I've, I've never been so dependent on having my, my hands intact for a livelihood. I, I wonder if you guys would still watch the show. Okay. Going down a weird thought rabbit hole right now. Let's uh, chop up this garlic. <laughs> so I just uh, minced it a little bit and now I'm just going to really try to chop it down to size. I want it almost to a paste. I want it really nicely, finely minced. Let's get it all off the blade there. I should be way better at chopping garlic by this point in my career, but um, whatever, man, if it ain't broke. Also, you know, as I've discussed, as I discussed on Hot Ones, I hope you guys uh, checked out my, my appearance on Hot Ones. If you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. It's a lot of fun to do, and I think it's fun to watch. Um, but, uh, you know, I, 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 as you guys know, hopefully know by now, I'm, I'm not a chef. I've not been to culinary school. I am a student of the internet, just like you all, just like anybody who's in here learning something, hopefully, I hope. Uh, I was taught by my, by my, um, um, my, my uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for right now? My co uh, peers, that's it. I was taught by my peers by, and, and by people who are way better than me uh, doing this. Um, I, uh, I wish that I had more to teach, but I'm learning a lot right along with, with you guys. I hope that's part of the fun. Now, the ginger I am going to grate because... It was pointless to chop up that garlic like that. That was extra work that I didn't need to do. So I'm just gonna hit this guy in the microplane here. And if you don't have one of these microplanes, you gotta go get one. It's really handy and it's gonna help you get, just break down ingredients to much finer and um, 
you know, it's going to help you yield more professional results. That's what all these tools do. Nobody needs a microplane. You could do, you could, you could, you know, finely mince garlic and have a similar result with what's going to come out of the uh, the microplane. But uh, this is going to help you do it faster, and it's going to help you do it more consistently. I might have just finely minced that garlic, but it's it's very inconsistent. There are a lot of pieces that are bigger than other pieces, and you know, that's why you get sort of little tools like this. It just helps you create more textures and and uh, and and break down and and uh, incorporate ingredients in new and exciting ways. Okay, so this is almost grated. I'm gonna grate my fingers if I keep going here. So that's plenty of ginger. Don't wanna over ginger it, I guess. I mean, it probably wouldn't be a bad thing. Can't imagine. So there we go. There's about a little shy of two inches of, of roughly, of, uh, of finely grated ginger. So there's that. You know, for having such a lovely kitchen that I do, I have the worst sink in the known universe. This sink has the same water pressure as a, um, uh, uh, a, a, a dog's drool. It is just, oh, that was gross, sorry. <laughs> I was trying to come up with something. I was like, don't, make, don't say something gross. Don't say, don't say something weird. And lo and behold. Okay, so we're heading back over the stove top yet again. Here we go. So... I'm going to get this shimmering. Don't want it smoking or nothing. We just want uh, a little shimmer on this oil. Good for sauteing. We want to hear that sizzle when we throw down the onions. And that's the first thing that's going in, is that uh, we're, we're dropping the onions in, letting those sort of sweat down a little bit. These guys, the, uh, the whites of the scallions. And we want to just soften those up a little bit. And then once, they're, once they've sweated out, as it's, as it's called, once, not sweated out, but once, once we've sweated the whites of the scallions, we're going to add the um, ginger and garlic, let those get nice and aromatic and, and um, uh, um, it just as, as soon as they become really, what's the word I'm looking for? Why is my vocabulary out the window right now? What's happening? Um, as soon as they become aromatic? Is that the word I'm looking for? Whatever. As soon as we can smell them, good. <laughs> what's wrong with me? Um, uh, as, 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 yeah, uh, once they're aromatic, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, add the sauce right here, the sort of liquid components of the sauce. This also has some, um, some cornstarch in it that is going to act as our thickener. And we're going to simmer it for one additional minute with the arbol chilies, and that will be our sauce. And then we're going to set that aside and get to deep frying. And then we just toss the fried chicken with the sauce, and we got ourselves some General Tso's. And I forgot to make rice, and it's too late now, so we're not going to make rice. Um, whoops. Oh, well. I mean, I could, I could do it. I could do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> we got time. Okay, so my favorite way to make rice, as many of you might or might not know, is to grab the lid for a small pot like this. Oh jeez, I had I had someone come through and clean my house and they put stuff in all weird places. Here we go. Is this the right lid? No, it's not. Um, this is interesting. All right, we got some hot oil over here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get started on this. Uh, before, uh, jeez, where's the lid? If I can just find the lid, then we'll be in good shape. Where is the lid for this pot? Oh shoot. Huh. All right. Well, you know what? We can use this pot. How about that? How about that? This, this is the one that that lid was for, I'm sure. Boom! That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a Cinderella fit right there. Um, all right, so into this pot. My, my favorite way to make rice, as many of you might know by now, I don't know, but we'll find out, is um, to bake the rice. So let me grab the white rice here. Sorry, pardon me for just a moment, folks. I'm just going to go find the white rice. I'm going to keep talking so you hear the sound of my voice. I know I haven't gone anywhere really, and that I will be back one day. Um, that's sushi rice. Where's the white rice? Oh my god. Remember what you said about kitchen chaos? Well, here we are. Don't even know where the white rice is. Here we go. Here we go. Jeez. Okay. 
Who tuned in expecting a professional cooking show? Not me. Um, so with this, we need to da, 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 one cup of rice with up to two cups of water. I like to go a little shy on the water, so I'm going to do like um, like one and three quarters, maybe just a little a little shy of that. So let me fill this up with water here. And like I said, I have the slowest the slowest sink, the lowest water pressure in the whole of human history. So I'm just going to do like one and three quarter, one and seven eighths cups of water. Uh, I like to go just under what the directions say. That's like more like one and three quarter. We need a little bit more than that. Okay. That's good. All right. So one and three quarter cups. Go. And then to that... We're gonna add the rice, but first we're just gonna bring this to a quick boil. Now a little pinch of salt, like so. And onto the stove it goes. And I'm also going to cover it as soon as I've wiped off this lid, because it's a little dusty, because I haven't used this pot in a long time. Because these pots are kind of junky and I just sort of bought them to, to uh, accent the back wall. I, 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 it's so great, I live in Soho and I'm surrounded by these uh, restaurant supply companies. and I was able to go in there. I, th I think I spent probably about 200 bucks on all the stuff on the back wall that you can't really see right now because there's too much stuff in the way. But uh, I, I, all, all the tools and utensils that are hanging back here, I only use about half of them. Most of them are kind of a decoration. That's not true. A lot of these are, are very useful. Never mind. There's just, it's literally just these pots. It's just these pots that hang right over there. Um, that uh, I don't really use, but I covered this entire wall for like 200 bucks. It was pretty great. Um, cheapest set decoration of all time, I'm, I'd wager. All right, while this is coming to a boil, first off, I'm gonna preheat my oven to about 375. It's about where I want it to, um, to bake the rice and also to keep the chicken warm. And I'm gonna bring this guy back up to temp. I think it's, I think it's pretty hot. Is it shimmering? Let's see. Yeah, it's almost shimmering. Let's, um, let's get the onions in there. Sweat these guys out a little bit. Yeah, we got a little sizzle going. Oh, I dropped an onion. Away it goes. And green onions are pretty prone to browning. I'm actually happy that we're putting these in such a low pan. Uh, our, uh, uh, the, 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 the pan is, is not as hot as I might have when I'm sauteing something. Because these guys will brown pretty quickly and we don't want that. Because they're very, very, very thin once, the, once the, little, the little rounds break up. Also, the green parts of an onion just tend to brown a little quicker than normal white or, sp or Spanish onions. Um, so. Gotta keep an eye on that. Let's turn down the heat a little bit. A little warm. Just as soon as these start look like looking like they're getting a little soft and they're they're starting to sweat and and, uh, and become translucent, that's when we add the other aromatics, which in this case are our garlic and our ginger. Which I'm, I think I'm just gonna add right now because they're uh, they already look like they're pretty much getting there. Let's add those in. That's gonna smell bananas. Gotta love ginger, gotta love garlic, getting thrown into a hot pan. It's one of life's very few pleasures. There we go. Let's let those... Fragrance, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> Let's let those become fragrance. I'm also gonna throw the chilies in there now because I just wanna toast them a little bit dry before... We wanna add about a dozen in there. Um, I want to add them before we add any liquids because I want them to receive some of the dry heat of the pan. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. There's a little half in there. Let's do one more. There we go. Okay. Toast these up real quick. We're just letting, just letting these flavors get to know each other and also just uh, letting the garlic and the ginger become accustomed to the heat of the pan, not, let it, let, not letting anything brown. We don't want to let anything brown. 
That's hot and the vapors from the peppers are stinging in my eyes. But yeah, toasting, dry, dry roasting as it's called, or, or, or uh, um, sauteing in a dry pan, the peppers is going to uh, just waken up their flavor a little, it's, it's, it's gonna wake up their flavor a little bit uh, and make them a little bit more pronounced. It's also gonna incorporate some of the capsaicin into the garlic and the, um, and the ginger, which is gonna help distribute it in the sauce, make the sauce a little spicier. Speaking of which, let's do that now. There we go, beautiful. And it already looks like it's a little bit more than last time, which is great, great news. And I just want to simmer that for like one minute until it gets nice and thick. It should thicken up pretty fast because of all the cornstarch. You can see that it's, I'm already starting to see the bottom of the pan when I drag the, 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 um, the wooden spoon around it. This is also like the best kind of wooden spoon I can recommend. Like, can you see this okay? I'm just noticing that it's in the corner of the frame. I apologize. Um, but uh, this is the best kind of wooden spoon I can really recommend because when you're working on stuff like this, you can really scrape the bottom of the pan, you can get in there, make sure that nobody's sticking around or not getting enough love. Yeah, and we're just going for like literally 60 seconds until this gets nice and thick. And it's gonna look pretty chunky. There's a lot of garlic, there's a lot of, and you know, to be fair, I also, I chopped that garlic probably a little bit not, not, not fine enough. I probably would rather have crushed it in there or grated it. Um, that way it would have been a little bit less pronounced, but like, or uh, visually pronounced, I mean. And uh, you can see it's starting to thicken up here. When I drag my spoon through it, it's leaving a nice trail. And that means that we're almost where we want to be. Cornstarch is a wonderful thickener for all kinds of stuff, but sauces, you just, you just can't beat it. So there that goes. I'm also going to give a little a little taste test, just make sure that it's approaching where we want it to be. And salt and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, that's good. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yeah, even if it doesn't like look exactly the way it should because I left too many big chunks of garlic in there, I bet you're not even gonna notice once we toss the, uh, toss the chicken in there, I bet you're not even gonna notice. Let's see if our water's boiling here, I bet it is. It is, Woo, it's hot. Okay, so. To make the rice, turn down the heat on that a little bit for starters. And then I'm going to measure out one cup of rice. This is just plain Jane, long grain white rice. One cup of it. There we go. Make sure it's just a cup. We don't want to go too over here. And we can also kill the heat on this almost. I'm going to let it cook a little bit longer. I want it nice and super thick. And uh, this is boiling, so into the water goes the rice. Uh, we're gonna give it a little stir with this uh, tiny little spoon. You don't have to do this, but uh, well darn it, I like it. And that's just gonna give it like a little head start in the oven so the rice doesn't get too mushy and it's going straight into the oven. There it goes. That's in the oven, and that's going to go for uh, about 20 to 25 minutes. So I'm going to set a timer to make sure I don't lose track of that. Actually, Jake, do you mind setting a timer? My phone, because I'm on the phone with you, I don't think it's going to let me do it. Thank you. And over here, we have a nice, robust, thick sauce. Either way, when I drag my spoon through it, it leaves a nice trail like that. It's exactly where we want to see it, just like that. So that's coming off the heat or, you know, I'm turning off the burner. And now, to center stage comes our frying oil, which is hilarious because I have, like, not nearly enough oil. It's gonna be just enough to do this uh, because we're frying the chicken in such small chunks. But uh, I have decidedly not enough oil here. But that's part of learning in the kitchen. You need to improvise a little bit sometimes. And, you know, southern fried chicken, True southern fried chicken is not immersion fried. It's not completely uh, immersed in the oil when you're frying it. It's in a shallow um, cast iron pan. And typically half the chicken is sticking out the top of the pan. So it's okay to, to have the chicken not be completely submerged. It's, it's gonna be perfectly capable of giving us the product that we're after. So 
Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to camera A because we gotta bread some chicken. Here we go. So, we've got our breading mixture here. Move this knife out the way. Get these chilies out the way. And let's bring our chicken over. I'm gonna glove up. Not because I'm afraid of chicken, but it's just handy because I don't have to wash my hands between doing stuff and I might need to run over there and do something or I might need to, uh, who knows what. You never know what's gonna happen in the kitchen, so. And also, I, I just find like, even if you're not afraid of meat, like if you're not afraid of the texture of meat or whatever, it's just like having this layer between you and the meat kind of just makes you um, manhandle a little, a little bit more, be, be a little less afraid of like, of really tossing it around and roughing it up. And with meat, you typically need to do that, so. Here we go. I'm gonna shake off as much excess marinade as I can. I'm just gonna start laying these guys in. We might not be able to fit them all in the first round, but I'm gonna try. I don't really want them to be overlapping much, so I want them to get a nice even coat of breading. There we go. This, this chicken looks nice and beautifully marinated. It's nice and dark. It's definitely picked up a lot of color uh, from the soy sauce and that translates to a lot of flavor. And we're gonna fry this at some pretty, just pretty average heat. They're so small that we don't wanna do any kind of like double frying or anything like that we might no, do with traditional fried chicken because um, they're so small, they're gonna cook very, very quickly. So that's about as much as I can fit in there. It's about half the chicken. So I'm gonna just start tossing these guys around here. And ideally, I want to let, them, let these sit in here for a minute, which is why I want to get it all breaded if possible. But you can see on these pieces that they're picking up the little chunks. Maybe you can't see that, but they're picking up all the little chunks uh, in the breading that were left there from um, the little bit of liquid that we added. Sorry for the siren, folks. We do live in New York City, and there's going to be sirens every now and again. I also live right above a fire, uh, a, a, a firehouse. Uh, firehouse? Fire station, Jesus. <laughs> What's going on with me today, Jake? What's happening? What did, what did I do? Did also, I hit my I head? Think, I think you can just hear that in our phone call. I don't think they can hear the sirens. Okay. I guess because I heard it outside and I heard it in our phone call, I was like, oh, they must be able to hear it. Okay, well, sorry, folks. Uh, am I missing any cool questions while my hands are dirty here? Yeah, actually, we have a question from Anna Harper, given 20 bucks. Thanks so much, Anna. That's incredible. Anna, thank you. Uh, what's the significance of the different objects falling into the glass in the bottom corner graphic? Uh, I think... <laughs> Those are my face. The, the, what, the face is subscriptions. So anytime someone subscribes, their name and the, the babby face scrolls by. The gold balls are, I think... Um, whatchamacallit, uh, Super Chats, and then the white balls are new members. But if anyone wants to test that out and prove it, we will be watching. <laughs> that was solicitous. Um, wait, was that the right use of that word? Don't trust me today with any kind of words. I do not have the best words. Um, all right, so as you can see, we got all the chicken in here. Probably could have just dumped it all in, but like, we got it all nice and evenly coated. And I also want to just kind of let it sit in there for a little while. That's something I learned from um, Sean Brock, uh, not from him, not like he showed me, but like from watching him on Mind of a Chef, is that it's nice to just let your chicken sit in the dry breading for a little bit because it's going to help hydrate the flour and it's going to help more of it stick to the chicken and also uh, create a more um, structurally sound crust that won't fall off. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bind the flour together. Oh, look at the mess I made. Um, it's going to help bind the flour together and give you a more, a crispier and more structurally sound crust that isn't going to fall off or anything. So since our oil is still preheating, we're still about 100, uh, 100 degrees shy of where we need to be. Perfect time to just let the, sick, uh, let the chicken sit and chill. I'm just wipe, wiping this mess off. And um, we're almost good to go here. The rice is in the oven, that's awesome. I genuinely thought I was gonna forget about that, so hurrah. Um, I think v v v Vinny, before we started, he, uh, he, he, he challenged me to make the rice. He was like, are you gonna make rice? Are you gonna remember this time? Because 
last time uh, when I made um, curry, I forgot to make rice, and it was a big it was a, it was a big controversy. Hmm. Okay. Let's see what's going on with you guys. We're almost to frying here. Who is ready to fry? Let's do it. Um, we have a hundred DKKs. Uh, I don't know what's what uh, currency that is, but thank you so much for giving me so many of them. Have you ever considered doing any Lord of the Rings slash The Hobbit themed food? It would be great to uh, it would get great attention due to the fact that marathon, marathons happen all the time in these uh, themed food. Also, I love you. I love you too, Gundolf. Thank you very much for the very generous super chat. Um, and yes, I absolutely have wanted to do a Lord of the Rings themed episode for a long time now but I've been resistant to it because I don't like fantasy food. I want to make foods that are practical and that can be, that can be accurately recreated. But um, you guys have Jess, my girlfriend, to thank uh, for me finally breaking down because uh, the Lord of the Rings movies are some of her favorites and uh, she really wants to see a Lord of the Rings special. So we're going to be making one of those in the near future and that's probably when you'll see her again. She'll be my taste tester. Okay, we're ready to fry over here over on the uh, stovetop. So... I'm just going to start dropping in chicken. We're at about 388 right now, which is a little high. I wanted to be around 375, but it will be fine. Everything's going to be fine. All right. There we go. And the oil it goes. Do not overcrowd them. I don't want them to touch. I also don't want to put in too many because we don't want to bring down the temperature of the oil too much. We want to keep the temperature nice and high. I wish I could give you guys a view down into this. I apologize, but if you want to see what frying chicken looks like, go watch any of my other videos. Um, there we go, first batch is in. And this will probably take three or four batches because uh, there's, you can't, can't fit too much in there. And now that it's in there, I'm just gonna agitate it a little bit because that, you know not everybody's totally covered by the oil. And we're just letting this fry like three, four minutes. And you, you can see already, like look how craggly this is getting. Like that's exactly the, the texture that we're looking for. We want this to look almost like, um, like chicken skin uh, on the outside. Like just, you know what I mean. Um, just uh, uh, really craggly, really bumpy. And that's going to create all these nooks and crannies that the uh, sauce will, will cling to. And it's also gonna keep the exterior of the chicken crispy when um, when, once we add sauce on it, because uh, it's not—it's not going to get as soggy as quickly as it might, as it might have without those craggles. Yeah, tempura batter would get uh, really soggy really fast. I would wager. That's why they always serve um, sweet and sour pork with uh, the sauce on the side, because I'm willing to bet that would get soggy real fast. Ooh, that's hot! Wow. Okay, that is starting to look really nice. Well, we have at least one really good batch of, uh-oh, of General Tso's chicken here. Uh-oh, that went right into the chicken. Not what we wanted. There we go. <laughs> okay, back in the oil you go. We want to try to try to keep the oil around 350 if you can. It's going to drop, obviously. But uh, just try to keep it around 350, and we're just going to uh, fry this for, I think... I said four minutes. What did I say in the episode? I said, yeah, four minutes. Um, so yeah, we're just cooking this for about four minutes, just until it's visually done. Because this, again, this chicken's so small, and we're also going to be finishing it in the oven. So if it is a few degrees shy of done in, on the in, on the inside, it's not going to be a problem because it'll finish cooking in the oven. I'm just going to flip this one rogue here that hasn't flipped yet. There we go. And just to show you guys where I'm at here. It's, uh, it's starting to get really nice and, and golden brown. It's still a little blonde from where I want it to be. And uh, it's starting to look like popcorn chicken, like popcorn shrimp kind of. That's pretty much what we want. We just want this to turn nice and deep golden brown. We don't want to overcook it. This is white meat after all. It's going to dry out real fast if we overcook it. Um, by the way, thank you guys for turning me on to... Um, somebody in the subreddit yesterday turned me on to a show called Letter Kenny. Which is like, it's it's like it's like. What, what you told me about Letterkenny or about the post? Yeah, Letterkenny. I love that show. Dude, I, I I'm sorry that I didn't give it a chance before. I, I watched. Uh, it's like it's like Trailer Park Boys 2.0. It's like 
I, I love Trailer Park Boys, but that, that, that is like a way better Trailer Park Boys. It's, it, I, I, I was cracking up watching it last night. So mm. much great banter, so many great hockey sayings. It's incredible. Also, just the way that main dude, ta- I can't remember his name, Wayne? Not Wayne. Who's, who's, the, ta- who's the tall one who's always wearing the, uh, the, the plaid? I'm pretty sure that's Wayne. Okay, well, the way Wayne talks really just tickles me. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the very, very sort of um, backwoodsy uh, uh, Canadian pronunciation of all these different words and, and his, his kind of, I don't know what his, his demeanor, what I would call it, it's like halfway between violent and, like, and pacifist. I, I have no idea what I would call him. Um, so here, we got our first round of chicken out here, guys. It's nice and crispy. It's nice and brown. And we're just putting this on a wire rack, not only to drain, but also to put it in the oven and keep it warm whilst we finish the frying. So I'm gonna put this in the oven. And then we're gonna get our next, next batch, batch of chicken going. The oil is almost back up to temp. It's at 350. I'm just gonna crank this up a little bit. Oh, it's getting warm in here. Okay. Whew, all right. 350 is just fine. I think a lower temperature fry on the breast meat is probably the way to go. I'm just guessing, but like, seems like, uh, no, that's, prob- that's probably the opposite, actually. You probably want to fry breast meat faster now that I think about it, because um, dark meat, you want to cook lower and slower. Breast meat, you want to cook fast, so I'm wrong in what I'm saying right now, so just don't listen to me. Um, I'm just dropping this in. It's probably going to take three batches. I might not make all of it right now, just for the sake of time. Because we are pushing two hours right now, and that's a that's a real that's a real healthy live stream. I'm very happy about that. But also, you know, I got boys in the other room that have wives and wives and stuff, and I don't, don't want to keep anybody too long. Um, hungry boys, big hungry boys. Hung, hungry boys, the, the growing boys that need need their need their num nums. My and um, my hungry guys need their num nums. That's the new name of the new show. That's the new name for Benjamin with Babish. My hungry guys need their num nums. <laughs> um, I'm going to crank up this heat a little bit because we just dropped down to 325, which is not acceptable. Um, mm. Oh, it's good beer. Okay. What else are we talking about over here, folks? Well, this is frying. I'm going to take a look at some super chats. If we have any. Oh, we got a couple. That's 2199 from Ice Kitty. Uh, been a fan for a couple months, and I recommend. Uh, to try making some Finnish cuisine, either for the show or in your free time. For example, Kar- Karelian pie, black sausage, bl- I love blood sausage, and holiday drinks like glog and sima. I've never heard of any of those things except for black sausage, uh, and generally just in the, uh, the New Orleanian context, the uh, boudin noir, um, uh, French and, and Cajun context. Um, and uh, that sounds really interesting. I'm going to look into that. Thank you very much for the super chat. Thank you for the idea. Um, let me know if there's any place I can get Finnish cuisine here in New York. Maybe I can get some inspiration. This is getting very, I, I think I'm also going to stop because uh, this is getting very difficult to fry. I don't have enough oil in here. So these guys are like only half submerged and it's very hard to keep track of who's been flipped and, and what have you. Um, whew. And it's also getting very hot in here and I am dressed warmly and if you could see me right now I am probably a glistening sweaty mess which I'm sure some of you would be into but most of you wouldn't oh all right so that's okay that's good that's coming up to like three 350 right now um, I'm gonna try to find another tool to flip these with because it's really difficult with the spider that's good for getting them out but it's not so good for manipulating them um, there's my garlic crusher nice uh, da, 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 da. What do we got here? I guess tongs. Tongs are probably good. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's great for manipulating chicken in a small space. Maybe I will do all of this. We got three three big boys to feed. Vinny's my biggest boy. He's like seven foot twelve. Um, ah, he's just hot. Um, so yeah, man. General says like. I know, again, I know it's taken like two hours to make right now, but generally, if you're making this on your own, uh, generally, uh, sorry, um, if you're making this on your own, it'd probably take about half the time. 
and it would take about the same amount of time as it would take to order takeout. So like, why not try it? You know, it's not expensive to make. Once you buy the bottles of, of Chinese cooking wine and of dark soy sauce and, and toasted sesame seed oil, you'll have enough to make like 50 batches. So that's just a one-time investment. And then after that, you're just practicing. You're going to get so good at it. You're going to be able to kick the shit out of any, any takeout in your town. We live in New York City, and I, I, I have not had General Tso's as good as the one that I made uh, this first time doing this. And maybe I'm just ordering from the wrong places, but generally, uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, I feel like most Chinese takeout has, has some room for improvement. And this one, especially, you can, you can do it. You can, you can make it better. Um, Jake, how's the timing on the uh, rice? How much time do we have left there? Good question. The timer, the timer messed up. You should check that rice right oh. now. <laughs> sorry. I think it's. I it, think, <laughs> that's right. It, it's, I, that's it right. jumped I to an hour for some reason. I've never seen that before. I think it's uh, probably still got a ways to go, but I'm glad I asked. Uh, Siri sometimes uh, messes that up. Let's take a look at the rice here. It's back. It's back. Seven minutes left on that. Okay. It looks like it's got about seven minutes left. That's exactly what I was going to say. Um, Oh, yeah, still a little crunchy. There we go. All right, this chicken's ready to come out. And then it's going straight into the oven. Stay warm, stay crisp. While the rest of the, uh, well, hopefully the final batch of chicken cooks, because uh, I'm ready to eat here. I'm not ready to sit around much longer cooking. I'm ready to like, yeah, you know, put some stuff in my face. Okay, let's just get this out, and then once I get the next batch going, we'll answer some questions. So if you guys have any questions, shout them out, leave a super chat, and we will do our best to answer them. Just give me one second here. I'm just going to get this in the oven. There we go. That oven's so hot, it just blasts you in the face with hot air, so that's why every time I lean down and put stuff in there, that's why my face is like, ah! Okay, there we go. Last batch, I think. Maybe get as much as I can in there. There's still a lot of chicken left in here. Shit. That's all right. It will be eaten. Don't worry your pretty little heads about it. We have hungry boys in the other room. Trust me when I say they'll eat it. There's probably one more batch here. It's probably but I, mean, I think this will be enough for our demonstrative purposes. Once I'm done with this. That, I've never seen frying oil get so cloudy. That, that oil looks like an unfiltered beer. Um, okay, that's Brian. Let's ask, let's answer some questions here. We got 10 Canadian dollars from It's Regal. Would be really amazing if you did more recipes from the anime Food Wars. The dish from episode two would be amazing. I'll look into that. I've made something from Food Wars and I'd love to make more. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, Jack Sims gave 10 pounds sterling and said, I don't have any special message, but I love your videos. Keep it up. Thank you so much, Jack, and thank you for the very generous super chat. Alexi T gave 300 Russian rubles, I think is what they are. Uh, thank you so much for giving me so many rubles. Mr. Babish, bring me a dream. I, I will try. Um, I endeavor to do that every episode here on Binging with Babish. $10 from Patrick Hyde. Uh, what products do you use for your beard, if any? I use um, beard oil. Uh, I shampoo and condition my beard, and I use beard oil, and then I, I uh, commit 100 uh, brush strokes on my beard per day uh, with, a, with, a, with a boar's hair, I think, I think it's called a boar's hair brush, yes. Five dollars from Joseph Stuckey, has Brad Leo never referred to you as anything other than Babby? I don't think so. I think just even in like casual conversation and, and hanging out, I think he still calls me Babby, which is weird, man, my, my name's Andrew. Um, but uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he invented that nickname, and that's all that anybody calls me. It's, it, he, he, he really coined that. Um, let me just throw some, an UV glove on here. We're hoping to do some stuff in the near future together. We're talking about making a, um, a fermentation video together very soon, so keep an eye out for that. 
I'm just flipping the chicken here because there's in less and less oil every time I do this. Um, just trying to agitate it a little bit, make sure everybody gets gets some attention, make sure the oil stays hot because it's not very warm right now. 325, that's a little low. Let's get that really cranked up now, come on. Okay, I put too much chicken in there, it cooled off the oil. Um, let's see, we got $10 from Founder Timeless Capital. Andrew, greetings from Sydney, wanted to say hello, love your channel, all my respect for you as a person and the way you conduct yourself. Keep, hashtag keep moving forward. That's really kind of you, thank you so much, man. I, I, re I really try to pride myself on being um, well conducted. <laughs> and uh, I really appreciate that. It's very, very kind of you to say, and thank you so much for the super chat. Five pounds ster uh, sterling from uh, Nightshade Gaming. Can you make a series where you read books to us? I did, it's called Bedtime with Babish. Go look it up, it is a podcast called Bedtime with Babish. I only did about 10 episodes, but it was a lot of fun, and I plan on doing more when I can. Jay Sood gave five uh, pounds sterling, said, I'm trying to pick a song title for an electronic sort of chill song. What should I call it? I think you should call it um, uh, uh, um, hmm. Sawyer, what do you think you should call it? <laughs> Sawyer's very creative with this kind of stuff. A chill song? Chill electro something. Electronic sort of chill song. Uh, what was the name of that uh, cooking one? Oh, uh, Shit, I can't remember, uh, not Sha, ja, was it Zhao Zing? Zhao Zing? Shishing, I think just Shishing. Shishing. There it is. Spelled Shishing. phonetically. Yeah. That's it, Shishing. Sound, or you know what? Uh, may, maybe after uh, Dale from, um, from uh, 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 Shisha. King of the Hill, it should be Shisha. Shisha, yeah, agreed. Shisha, or, or Pocket Sand. Yeah. That would get you some views. If you called anything on, pocket, on YouTube Pocket Sand, you'd get some views on it, I promise. Okay, round three is almost done here. You think I should go for round four, or you think I should call it? On the rice? We got one minute left on the rice, so uh, okay. it's dealer's choice. All right, well, I'm going to wipe down the table a little bit and just prep it for meal service. Where's my... Oh, here we go. This is like when you have a when you have a wooden cutting board or any kind of wooden or any kind of you know, surface like this, it's really helpful to have a bench scraper not only to do you know baking stuff but also just helps to get all this stuff off of here because this can be hard to wipe up. So that's handy, it's good to have. And I'm just gonna give this a little. little oh, that was probably loud. Sorry, sorry for all your collective ears. But I just did that. All right, wipe this down, get it ready for service. Let's get all this hot oil out of here. No oil for Babby. There we go. Don't put Babby in a corner, as they say. All right, that chicken's looking done. Let's uh, da -da -da -da. let's get it out. Timer. Here's your timer. Thank you. It's a good time for a timer. All right, let's get this out. Pick it out this time instead of using the spider, so I'm a little more accurate. That's looking righteous. That's looking like some pre sows General sows chicken. I really want to watch that General sows documentary. It's supposed to be like a really interesting story about like trying to find the origins of uh, the name General says, I think I have enough here, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kill the heat and I'm gonna move forward. I do want to finish these in the oven a little bit, just in case anybody hasn't come up to temp. But that one had a, in particular had a long frying time, so I'm not worried. But uh, you know, just just to be safe, you know, we're on the we're, we're showing how to cook here. If I were ah, doing this privately, I'd totally serve that to you guys. All right, here's our rice, which I'm going to. Let's start by moving this so it's out of the way. Oh, that is some sludgy frying oil. That frying oil has seen better days. Okay, and in here we have some perfectly cooked white rice. See, it's just the best way to make white rice because um, 
the best way to make white rice because it always comes out super fluffy. It never comes out like gummy or, or, uh, or porridgey the way it sometimes does when you cook it on the stovetop. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. I'm going to set up a plate here for service. All right. And the last step that we have to take, put this out of the way, is to toss in our sauce. And that's it. Um, let's grab the chicken. Here it is. Beautiful looking chicken. Look at that. Huh? Come on. Come on. Get out of here. I don't want to, I'd love to just dump it in, but I have a feeling I'm going to drop a lot into the stove and I don't want to do that, especially live on camera. So I'm just going to one at a time drop them in here. And somebody informed me of something that I, I, I didn't really think about. And it's a very good point that I, um, I turned on the heat and I put this back over the heat before tossing with the chicken. And that would most certainly, the, the extra heat and the extra steam is probably going to affect your chicken's crispiness negatively. So I'm doing this with no heat. I'm relying on the heat of the chicken to reheat the sauce. And the sauce is plenty warm, but I want it to be nice and hot. And the heat of the chicken is going to just uh, effectively reheat the sauce and loosen it up a little bit so it's a little easier to, uh, to spread. I'm sorry this is taking so long, but I just, I really don't want to spill any. And I know I'm going to spill some when I, when I, t when I toss it. I promise I will. So don't worry. You're still going to get your, you're going to get your giggles off. All right. I'm going to put this back in the oven just so I don't have to deal with it right now. There we go. This goes back and let's toss. I might use a spatula actually. Let's do that rubber spatula just so I can more easily maneuver and get underneath and there we go. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Oh, oh yes sir. Yes please. Oh it smells so good. It sounds good. I don't know if you can hear it but it's like you can hear how crispy it is just rustling around in the pan. And we're just gonna make we're just gonna literally just stir it until the sauce has covered every piece of chicken. Come on, let's let's get over there. There we go. Got to kind of fold it over itself so it really gets coated. There we go. There we go. We just want everybody to be nice and evenly coated. So it's got that nice glistening kind of exterior to it. And I'm trying to be gentle because I don't want to break off any of the breading. But like I said, we did that resting technique and the breading is really on there. I haven't lost a crumb of it yet. There's no like rogue pieces of breading floating around in this... Uh, in this pan. Instead, all we have is nice saucy chicken, which I'm just trying to make sure is entirely saturated. I still got some dry patches here, and I don't want to see those. I want to see nothing but glistening, moist chicken. Sorry. Um, there we go. Just fold it. Oh, I almost lost a piece there. Almost. I haven't lost anything yet. I'm very proud of myself. All right, that's looking. Like some general sows, if you ask me, not that you're asking me. But maybe you are, I don't know. Okay, again, not quite enough sauce. I really like having a lot of sauce in my general sows, and I thought I really overdid it. I'm glad I didn't make more chicken, because this is really at its limit here for sauce saturation. But that's looking really nice. That's looking like some general sows right there. So, last step is to dump some rice. Just uh, use a plain old spoon here. Just gonna lay out a nice bed of rice. Obviously, if you're ordering this from takeout, you'd have this in separate containers, but this is the way I like to serve it. Just make a nice bed here. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just perfect white rice, that's all that is. Okay, and let's dump on our General Usos. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Get those chili peppers on there. Some people might want to snack on those if they're real crazy. 
And uh, this obviously is a little, <coughs> little disorganized. We can just kind of prop everybody up. It's super crispy. I can already feel it. And there you go. That is general so's that I wager will kick the shit out of anything you can get from a takeout place, I promise. I'm just grabbing some chopsticks here. I do it right. Oh, don't forget the garnish. You worked hard on that garnish. You might as well treat yourself to some nice color contrast and a little bit of oniony crunch in every few bites, you know? Let's really get it on there. I don't want to see it. There we go. And that is how you make General So's Habavish style. All right, let's try this out. Here we go. Where's my first piece? Where's my first victim? How about you? Hmm. 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 It's perfect. It's spicy. It's got some nice heat. It could definitely use more sauce. I wish that I had more sauce. That's my fault. But it's got great heat to it. The chicken is still super crunchy. The sauce is like, it's hot and it's sweet, but it's not cloyingly sweet. It's not like angrily hot. It's just a great balance. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. And that might have taken us two hours because we were we were chatting and hanging out. But if you were just chilling, making making it yourself, you'd be done with this in forty five minutes. And um, it's just such a massive improvement on what you get out of the uh, styrofoam containers and the takeout boxes. Here, I'm gonna hop down here. There we go. You can see how sweaty and hot I am because it is just so hot in here. It's my fault. Um, I forgot to turn on the AC. So this just like, this just really, really works out. And it's something that like is better than you thought it could be. It, 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 it elevates it without being snooty or pretentious or reinventing it. It's just a better version of it in, in a way that you can't really understand until you try it. Mm. Mm -mm. You know, I think it would be really good in it. <clears throat> it would be some fish sauce. I'm gonna try that next time. I'm gonna try putting fish sauce in the um, in the marinade, or maybe even in the sauce itself. And I'm gonna make double the sauce next time. I'm doubling it because <laughs> this is an it's a, it's appropriate. It's not under sauced, but like I really want a lot, and I, I want to be I want it to be soaking up in the rice and all that stuff. I, 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 want, it to, I want it to be significant. Um, but yeah, this is, this is um, really good. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. I can see everybody's taking off because they know that we're at the end of the road here. Um, but uh, I really appreciate everybody hanging out and the very kind super chats, the very kind words, the um, uh, folks who are saying that they're inspired to cook by watching the show. And I really hope that this inspires you to try making this yourself because it's easy. Um, it doesn't take that much time, and it's really worth it. Um, hope you give it a shot. And thank you guys so much for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Here's to you. Cheers. Thank you to Sawyer and Vinny in the other room for keeping an eye on things and for, for administrating this whole thing. And uh, I'm going to go feed them now because i got some hungry boys in the other room, and I need, they need their num-nums. As I mentioned, that's the new name of the show. My hungry boys need their num-nums. So... Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for cooking with me and for learning along with me. And uh, we'll see you next time. I love doing these live streams. We'll do them uh, again soon once we have um, a basics come out that, 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 uh, that we can live stream with. The next basics is going to be butchery, just like different cuts of beef. So that's not really a live stream that we can do. But after that, fair game. I'm looking at you, pizza. Because <laughs> we made an amazing pan pizza. I'm very excited to try that with you guys. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me out. I hope you have a great night. I hope you have a great weekend. And uh, keep cooking, okay? Good.